And hello and welcome back to day two of the Great Big Wool Show. I've got Danielle waiting to come in to give us a, a, a quick roundup of day one and then Nick from the Great Ocean Road is going to join us. So let's get Danielle in. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yep, welcome to day two. It's going to be... Hello and welcome back to day two of the Great oh, Big Wool Show. Hang on I one second. <laughs> This is what happens when you go live. I had a screen up, but I was watching the I was watching my own broadcast <laughs> on another screen. Sorry oh, about I that. I have a mobile phone and have it on mute. <laughs> this is this is live, guys. This is what happens. This is live. Um, this but, is what happens when you go live. Yeah. And I gave Danielle um, five minutes notice that she was going to jump in. So. You know. So thank you so much, everyone. Yes, it was a massive day. Um, welcome back for day two. We've got a cracker of a day for you today. Um, so we're going to start start with Nick uh, from Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills, um, and we've got some great speakers lined up today. Um, if you missed our live stream yesterday, you can jump in. It is live on the website um, at thebigwoolshow.com forward slash speakers, so you can find it there. Um, and I just really hope you guys um, enjoy today. So thank you. It's got it's a good lineup. And um, are you ready, Nick? Uh, give us a thumbs up if you're ready for us. Big thumbs up. All right, Danielle, I'll chat with you throughout the day. And um, here we go. Day two. Yay. <laughs> okay, we've got Nick from the Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill joining us. If you haven't seen already, Nick has done a great interview that we have up on the website already under speakers. So you can go and check out and find out some information there. But, but don't do it now. Wait until after Nick is live. Uh, if you've got any questions or any comments, make sure you drop them into the YouTube chat. If you've got any questions for Nick or anything like that, make sure that he knows that you have a question. So here we go. Hi, Nick. How are you going? Very good. Very good, Chantal. That's awesome. Thanks for having me on. No worries. Check you out in your in your factory. I know. This is where we live. It feels like that anyway. That's what we do. <laughs> we make yard all day, every day. Well, I mean, I actually don't have a problem with that, really. Like, someone needs to make the yarn for us, right? Oh, exactly. And that's what we do. So we uh, we enjoy what we do. So we do it all the time. It's just uh, the way of the world, isn't it? Especially at this time of the year when everybody's really keen and getting into it all. And we think, well, let's keep up that, that demand and that supply chain working. That is, I am so glad to hear that. I was reading an article this morning, actually, they were talking about how um, toilet paper is no longer the most purchased item for, for the uh, COVID. They're, they're saying that apparently that yarn is. I'm going to have to find the article I was reading. And I was just like, well, I mean, from my perspective, I see it. But for a whole world perspective? Yeah, crazy, I think. But um, I wouldn't be surprised. We've, we've been pretty flat out, um, as people know, that a lot of things on our website have been getting low in stock or being restocked. And, yeah, so been very busy in this little part of the world anyway, which is great. Yeah. It is a good thing to be busy, especially at the moment, which is great. It's winter for us here in Australia, so it is actually mm. our, our yarn-heavy time of the year for us as well, which is good. Yes, um, exactly. Now, Nick, how have you been going? Like, I, how, how's your store going? Like, is everything ticking along nicely and you're selling all your beautiful blends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday was uh, we had quite a few orders ticking along, which is great. And oh, that's um, cool. yeah, uh, straight after this, I'll be getting back on the machines and making some more noise so that I can make more noise. Restock make more some noise. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's awesome. So the advantage for you is even if you kind of like it sounds a bit dramatic, even if you like run out of yarn, it's it's only a matter of time before you can actually just fire everything up and get a bit more yarn going. Is that right? Pretty much, yeah, providing we've got the fibre. Um, I think, as I said in my, my interview the other day, that uh, we, we source our fibre directly off certain farmers and um, yeah. that, that's a finite resource, so when that runs out, we run out. Uh, yeah. But thankfully, thankfully, we've got a couple of um, very large shipping containers stocked full of yummy, yarny surprises. So, uh, oh, yeah, it's just a matter of working through them until... 
there's a few things that are getting very low in stock that uh, we just can't replace but uh, until next shearing season, which is October, November for most people down this part of the world. So, yeah. Well, the top of my head, that's your black alpaca, is that right? Yes. So black alpaca is one of the harder fibres to come through. Um, it's, yeah, it's just, it's just limited, which is great, I guess, for those who do end up get, being able to get their hands on it. Uh, and yeah. I think it... That's a great example, I think, also that we should cherish the fibre when we do get it, that it's not about just, uh, I guess, taking it for granted that you can walk into any store and just get black fibre all day, every day. It is a limited resource. Gosh. It is. It's one of those things because, like, in this day and age, and I think we mentioned it in your, in your interview, that people's, exp well, not everybody's, but some people's expectations is, okay, I want to buy a thing, send me the thing. They yeah. don't quite grasp the concept that, especially with your, you know, your locally sourced fibres, because you guys are 100% locally sourced except for flax. Except for our, right? yeah, except for our flax, yeah. which comes from Belgium, um, just simply because yeah. Australia actually doesn't grow it for, for spinning. Um, yeah. Apart from that, everything else comes from Australia and apart from the cotton that we use, everything else comes from Victoria. So... We really are about keeping it local, which does come with that, I guess, that limitation that you can't always access everything all the time. But yeah. for us, it's also about, I guess, making making the yarn as authentic and as sustainably as we can really do that. So, yeah, which is why why we do everything in, in on site. So, yeah, everything from and the, you're also the supporting those farms as well. Yeah. It's not just when people make a purchase from the Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills, they're not just supporting. Um, you and the and the mill staff, they're also supporting Victorian farmers. Yeah, I am the mill <laughs> staff. <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no, all it good. Was just you and your wife that did it, or if there was any like little yeah, person yeah, yeah. running around giving a hand. So yeah, no, we, <laughs> okay. we we often so have, have a giggle. When, yeah, yeah, you're exactly. Also yeah, supporting yeah. Victorian sheep farmers and alpaca farmers. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and one of the things that we found really interesting is when we started this that there was a lot of a lot of farmers around in Victoria who didn't do a lot with their alpaca fibre because um, they couldn't find anywhere to get it processed or they just didn't then want to, the hassle of then on selling or anything like that. So um, no. actually some of the farmers we deal with, it's the first time they've ever actually sold their fibre to cover their shearing costs and the, the cost of raising oh, the animals. Yeah. and. Um, yeah, which is a bit gobsmacking given the, the quality of the fibre. But, um, yeah, a lot of Australians alpaca fibre gets exported to various places around the world, including Peru. Um, oh, wow. Why we Do they need more um, alpaca fibre over there? Isn't it like alpaca yeah. central? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently apparently they, they need more alpaca fibre than what they can supply and, and the quality of the Australian wow. alpaca stuff is better than what they grow in Peru. Gosh. So, yeah. I wonder if it's different. I'd love to like feel them to have like I mean I can't because I'm allergic to a packer, but I'd love to <laughs> know the differences like somebody who could feel it could tell me about um like if if, if it's a coarseness because do you measure alpacas yeah. in the same sort of micron system that you do with with sheep or is it different? Yeah. No, same same process. Um so it does go by micron uh, and I, I guess the the Peruvian alpacas just probably aren't just as fine. They do have some, um, yeah, yeah. but probably not the quantity of fineness that Australia's been breeding for for the last 25 years or so. Um, yeah. we, are, we are amongst the world leaders in alpaca genetics and fibre, so it's just a bit of a, a hidden thing that Australia's should be shouting from the rooftops. But, um, we need a little okay. certificate to hang off our border gates. Oh, uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. For 25 years, so alpaca... Alpacas haven't been in Australia super long. So, um, I mean, I'm assuming there have been alpacas here before the 25-year mark, but sort of the more breeding processes and, and sort of, you know, thumbs up awesomeness started 25 years ago. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, the, a gentleman, um, Charles Leisure, tried to bring some out in the 1800s and they didn't do too well. And yeah. really they then weren't, they didn't exist in the country until about 20, I think it's 26 years ago now. And, um, yeah, a group of guys got together and um, brought out the foundation herd, basically. 
Uh, yeah, so oh, I didn't realize it's been only been in Australia for such a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah, it's just just I guess part of what what happens. Um, I think pr the South Americans weren't real keen to export a lot of the animals out, um, trying to keep the market for themselves or whatever. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, it's so wow. we enjoy I, I, we enjoy I getting our hands on good quality here a lot longer. That's all. But we've got yeah. you guys are getting some beautiful quality fibers to add to your blends and for your pure alpaca yarn. So you've got your um, your website, which is um, uh, greatoceanroadwoolenmill.com. Is it dot au? Uh, yeah, dot au. Yeah, it's just the initial. Yep. So g o r w m dot com dot yep. au. Awesome. Um, and yeah, and so, if you're watching, you can actually just click through straight from the Big Wool Show. Um, the, the Great Ocean Road Wool and Mills is a sponsor, and so they're sort of at the top of the page. So they're right there. You can click and go and check out what Nick's got. I'm really hoping that that's correct, Danielle. Like, Danielle just gave me this look, and I'm like, oh, my God, I hope that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, you should be able to click through. Things. People are clicking through. Oh, Those are yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, so we, we, we've got a few different sorts of yarns on there. So we do some blends with um, Superfine Merino, which is non-mules. We've decided recently to go down the non-mules in class so that uh, I guess the, the sheep have a, a better life. And um, read some really interesting articles about the, the mulesing and the non-mulesing mm. and about the, um, is it SR? I think SRS. Yeah, SRS. S sorry, yes. I've only been reading it in the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And about how it's actually just a genetic, slight genetic change or, or more of a breeding into an existing genetic um, thing that just means that their skin's just not quite as wrinkly, which means that the whole thing with the, the flow, flies is a lot less likely to happen. And I just think, yeah. like, because I'm in camp, do you know what? What's worse? when it comes oh. to the, the mulesing yeah. versus the fly blow and I'm, I'm in camp what's worse and I know it's a very controversial discussion so we probably won't go too far down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but um, I, I think that if we, can, um, if we can support this SRS breeding and kind of breed out like a roll or two, I mean like I'd sign up for that personally, yeah. but um, breed out like a slightly less wrinkly skin just to make the sheep more comfortable um, and I... I was talking to, oh, my brain hurts. It was it was an interview I did last week as well, and they use the SRS sheep, and they were saying that it actually changes the fibre a little bit, but for the better. And yeah, so, it's certainly something. I, I, yeah, we've we've spoken to a few different sheep breeders about it. It's certainly something that um, is possible. Um, it does take time to breed. They've been breeding, I guess, these super fine merino for two hundred and fifty years. Yeah. Um, to get as much fibre on the animal as possible, and that's what then has created that issue with um, the fly strike. And yeah. I think the, the 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 way forward is to to change the genetics again through that breeding. Um, yeah, through the some same farmers way are a little bit against it in the first place. Just continue yeah. it on, so you still get the super fine, but without the problems. So I, d yeah. I thought it was. Exactly. So yeah. I got sucked into the science from that because I didn't realise it was a thing. So I was just like, cool, this is great. Um, Danielle yeah. Osman has a question for us. She says, I have yes. no idea it's going to be 25 years. Were llamas here before then? Maybe I remember seeing llamas. Llamas I can't tell you much about. Um, we've, we've never really gone down that track. Having alpacas yep. ourselves, we sort of just know about alpacas. Yep, um, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, so sorry, Danielle, well, I can't help you with that one. Into, <laughs> we can learn about. And this is this is the thing that I've noticed over this last sort of few weeks of chatting with you guys and a few and and a few of the other um, sponsors and things like that. Um, I've learnt so much about like the like I thought I knew a fair whack, honestly. Mm. <laughs> like I was just like, oh. yep, I know some things, but like. Yeah things i've been like the more things it's just phenomenal knowledge like you and you guys are all just sharing it so freely it's wonderful yeah look i think one of the things that we found really interesting when we started our journey in the whole making process was um how how complex it all is how much information there is out there whether mm. it's everything from types of sheep through to alpacas and 
llamas and and um, the different fibers, how the different fibers work, and also then I guess there's the whole complexities around every every stage of the process from from yeah. farming through to end product. There's there's just so much information in there. We've we've been doing this for five years now, and we're still learning constantly about ways of improving or the different things that happen within the industry that are good or not so good. Um, yeah. Everything like it's the whole thing with super wash fibres or the carbonising that can happen at the scouring, um, those sorts. There's, there's a whole range of different terms that people might come across and um, unfortunately, yeah, a lot of it's been hidden, I guess, which is why it's great to be able to have these, these events. Um, yeah. Where, where people can ask their questions or they can find out more information. Um, it, it's just so, I guess, so so involved. And there, there's, because I guess so much of it also has gone offshore over the last few decades that it's um, not something that's really in our face as much as it, it possibly should be. So, yeah, yeah. and that's a, and that's a part of what we really enjoy doing. Behind a term like carbonizing or superwash it just becomes a word and and yeah. the understanding of the process isn't there but people are happy to be like oh i want superwash or, oh i want you know it carbonized or or whatever and they may not actually understand what they're asking for like they know the product they get but they don't understand what that product went through to get to them in that state and, yeah exactly yeah and i think that's really i think that's a really in in invaluable that we're able to you know share this information um or yeah, you are i don't know it yeah. i'm just <laughs> i got no idea i'm just sitting here like pressing buttons i'm the button measure <laughs> yeah but um yeah but it, but it is it's there, there there is a lot of information out there and people uh, i guess you, you don't stop and ask those questions and unless it's relevant to you or unless somebody encourages that conversation to begin um it's the whole thing that Isabel pointed out a, a conversation going on social media today about um, fast fashion and about, I guess, the cost of things when you actually pay correct wages that you can't necessarily buy a $5 ball of wool, um, yeah. but that's done paying first world prices for the production. Um, and yeah. it's just the way it I think it's just about becoming a little bit more socially conscious or being willing to ask the questions or if you have no idea, then get in touch with people like us. We, we, we're we very happy to, I guess, share the knowledge that we've been gaining over the last five years with, with as many yeah. people as we can. Because it's, it's really like there was a few years ago, just as a side tangent, a few years ago where it was brought out about how much fashion was coming out of like um, really unsafe work environments in Bangladesh and everyone got up in arms about it because it became public. Now, mm. I, I think I think it's just, I think it's back under the rug again, but it, it got out there, the information was out there and now people know, okay, when I pick, it, pick up this $5 T-shirt, I know what I'm buying and they yeah. may not, they may not consciously um, connect their decision with that purchase but they, they really can't deny the knowledge anymore because it, it was out there. It made news across the world and, you know, yeah. and, and I think a similar thing is happening a little bit within the, the wool industry, um, not in the same sort of um, explosive way as what happened with, like, the, the fashion industry in Bangladesh, but more so just, like, people are learning what the deal is with Superwash and, and they're learning about the importance of, you know, like you guys, like hardcore local footprint and mm. people are understanding why you've decided to go that, down that path and it gives them the thought, well, they run a whole business going down that path. I'm just buying yarn. I could totally buy yarn from the Great Ocean Road woolen mills and support all these local people rather than export, like, you know, importing companies. Now, in saying that, I, I'm, I import a lot. <laughs> Of stuff. Oh, look, um, and, and you have to because like the production's yeah, because it's just not yeah, done. The the, um, the scale of production that's left in Australia ha is is difficult, and that's why so many of the people have to process in New Zealand or China or India because that's where the equipment's gone. Um, yeah, it's only uh, I, I'm, 
it sounds it's going to sound like a bit of a, a wind or a sales pitch but but unless people buy directly off the likes of us um, yeah. so that we can grow so that we can spin more then mm. our yarns will become more i guess uh, at a range where whole, we could wholesale more um yeah. the, the the production limitations that we have are only limited by the fact that it's only me at the moment if we yeah. if we got so busy that we could employ somebody then yeah. we could increase our production and then we would be able to sell wholesale to indie dyers so you wouldn't have to buy yeah. stuff overseas um it's it's there's a whole range of things but if if people don't shop from australian made yarn not yarn that's yeah. fun in New Zealand because that's supporting the, the friends over in the ditch. New Zealand, that's um, right. And, and people say, oh, but they're, they're virtually our cousins or our brothers or whatever. But virtually, they don't, that, they're not. <laughs> yeah, they're still not, yeah. yeah so, right. and, and there's mills in Australia that are struggling to survive still today. But yeah. So unless people uh, do actually do what they say, um, yeah, uh, we we try to make our yarns as cost effective as possible. Um, mm. We we we've got a bit of a running joke at the moment that this is the first year we've actually paid ourselves after five years. We're actually getting a, a little bit of a wage at the moment, which is nice. Yeah, um, like isn't that but, a bonus when you realise? Hang on a second. Yeah, I can get oh, it is. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I you guess know, one of the projects don't pay electricity bills. Oh, exactly, exactly. But um, one of the things that we're, we've been really, really buoyed about the, I guess the the success that we're starting to feel this this time around with all that's going on at the moment. So we're um we are looking at actually trying to source some more equipment so that we might be able to increase our production. Um, oh, fantastic. So so there's a few things like that that are going to come out of this, and hopefully. Hopefully, if this continues on and people continue to find Australian-made yarn and um, and purchase that and support people like us, then um, yeah. the more the more you'll start seeing in the marketplace, and the better it will be for everybody. Um, otherwise, kids in the future aren't going to have a job in Australia apart from making coffee or mowing lawns or something like that. So yeah, tourism, need, tourism jobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not much. You know tourism how well that's going <laughs> Yeah. So um, anyway, we we do go on a, on a little bit of a, a journey with our customers. Um, our yarns do have slubs and blubs in them occasionally. They do have vegetable matter in them occasionally, but that's all because of the way in which we the, the fibre that we use and the way in which we process. We we are quite open to people coming through when we're open. We're not open to the public at the moment because everyone's yeah. sick and dying, um, and we don't want to join that that list. But we are looking at having, we're trying, hopefully, to organise an open day on October 3rd. Um, oh, nice. Yep. So if if the world doesn't collapse any further in Victoria and you're in the, not in metropolitan Melbourne, it's still locked down possibly, um, keep an eye on our Facebook and our Instagram page because we'll be running meal tours on those days where we show people the process and people can actually see what, what goes into making a yarn from, from start to finish. Yeah. Um, and in the future, if the virus ever gets under control and we do reopen, then that's something that we've done in the past as well. So, yeah. That sounds like so, a lot of fun to be able to get in and have a look around and, and you know, see your process. So, yeah, Nick, look, we're, yep. with, it, with it being just you by yourself working your butt off in there, mm -hmm. how many sort of, like, I don't know if you measure it this way, but how many kilos a day would you approximately do if if you're just having a good day and nothing bad happens? <laughs> yeah, there's not many of those. Um, <laughs> at, at the moment, we do about three, three and a half kilos of yarn, finished yarn a day. Yeah. So it's not huge, um, yep. but constantly working on ways of improving production and making the process that little bit better. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it is a mini mill. And that's yeah. why we do small batch runs, um, yeah. and that's why all of our yarns are, I guess, somewhat limited in in how they come out. Um, every animal's different, every fibre is different, Absolutely. and that yeah. impacts things. But yeah, so we we comfortably do about about that three kilos a day. Some of the heavy, the fatter yarns, we can do a little bit quicker um, yeah. through the process. But yeah, generally about that three kilos a day at the moment. 
So if you are watching, and I can see that 60 of you are, do you have any questions for Nick? I definitely don't want him def walking away with that. Oh, there we go. Bam. Um, <laughs> straight up, questions have jumped in. So Spanner Chica said that she met you last year. Um, Excellent. We've got um, Ali says, I would be interested in a virtual open day or an in-person one if that, could, if that couldn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. Kat Johnson has said she'd like a virtual open day. Um, um, so not dying. Dying is cool, but dying is not cool. So she's having a play on words there with the, mm -hmm. the different kinds of dying that we do. Um, we've got Lara sisters are looking forward to coming to the mill again. Give Lara a cuddle for us. Yes, we, we had uh, the Lara sisters and stitches come down uh, a couple of years back now. And on the day that they turned up, we had a baby alpaca born. So oh. she got named Lara after, after the group that was here. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. So, oh, I love and, that. That's gorgeous. She's, she's, you've grown got... into a, she's grown into a really beautiful, strong, healthy alpaca who doesn't like shearing very much. <laughs> I'm not sure any alpacas actually do like shearing. Like, nah. really? They, they enjoy <laughs> once the fibre is off them and it's summertime and they're cooler, but, uh, yeah, so. They don't but enjoy no, the and, and that's a great idea about the, the virtual tour. So. Um, if we yep. can't go ahead with that day, then yeah, maybe we'll look at doing some sort of a walkthrough and some other sort of a, a live catch up yeah. with people so that they can ask all the questions that they're asking. Yeah. So Julie's got a question. And what what breed do you prefer to spin in your meal? Okay. So super fine merino is generally quite nice to work with. Um, we we do about eighteen micron merino through. Uh, I guess with with the merino that's been bred for 250 years to be processed through through mills so that's what all the equipment is designed and set up for yep. our packer is a little bit more challenging and um but generally if we get a good run with the alpaca it's quite nice black alpaca is harder than white alpaca uh there's a a, a, a strange makeup in the fiber that it just doesn't act as as the same and black alpaca is almost a little bit like suri alpaca in in the way that it processes so cereal alpaca is a little bit more challenging and we do do a little bit of cotton and there's a lot of swearing involved when i do the cotton because we're not <laughs> we're not set up to do cotton our machines shouldn't do cotton and it wasn't until after i'd done some cotton that we found out that we shouldn't be doing cotton um but yeah so cotton's the most challenging and uh, wool's probably the easiest yeah okay Oh, that's good. I'm just having a chuckle here um, at some of the comments. Elise has said that, you know, I actually said her name right. So don't worry, <laughs> like when people trash your name, but I'm still very good at trashing names. Um, so because yesterday we had a, we were chatting with... Um, uh, oh, sorry, there's just one. Uh, Kelly, oh, Kelly's just uh, come up with a question yeah. about that. So... The we don't dye any of our fibre here, so all of our greys, all of our browns are actually the colours of the alpacas. We use a lot of the alpaca fibre to, I guess, almost create new shades or different shades. But alpacas come in every colour from white through to black. They don't come in blues and pinks and everything else. Um, but if you look at our website, a lot of our range, our yarn ranges are those natural colours. So yeah, we don't dye. We did have. Um, a little bit of yarn with the Field of Dreams, which we did in conjunction with the Pearl Box Girls. Uh, that was commercially dyed for us in Australia's last dye house in Geelong. Um, and so, yeah, so every other product um, is just natural in colour at the moment. Because um, alpacas yeah. come in something like 26 natural colours. Yeah, like it's from amazing. Those rusty roses all the way through to like pitch black. Yeah, yeah. And it's. It, it's and that's, I guess, one of the things that we really love about it. You don't need to dye to get some beautiful colours and different variations. Um, so I've got a yarn just there, which is our medium grey, um, oh, which has got some black alpaca and merino mixed together. So it creates yeah. a lovely shade of, of grey by doing it that way. Um, but, yeah, natural colours, fantastic. And they don't, they don't run in the wash. Um, I, I, don't, I call don't, our don't panic. Yeah. That's just my camera being naughty, you know. Yeah, it's it's, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, so 
Uh, does Nick have a particular pattern or a suggestion that is best for his yarns? Um, the Pearl Code sweater is a fantastic design by Isabel Kramer. We've been very lucky that Isabel Kramer has fallen in love with our yarns. Um, she's a German wear designer for those who haven't come across her. And um, she's recently just also done the Topolino, uh, which is a, 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 a pattern using three or four skeins of our fingering weight yarn. So we don't sell patterns directly off our website. Um, people often ask us what patterns we have for sale. We prefer people to go to Ravelry and buy them directly off the designers. That way the designer's getting all the money. Yep. Um, we, we don't want to buy a pattern wholesale so the designer gets less only then yeah. to resell it. So, um, yeah, but if you jump on the Ravelry, check out Isabel Kramer's The Pearl Coast Sweater or The Topolino. They're two patterns that she's done using our yarns, which have come up a real treat. Awesome. We've got a couple of last questions we can pop yep. in. Um, Alison would like to know, do you process Merino and Alpaca together? Yes, yes. So that Are they kind of blended like rather than applied with? together? Yeah, it's blended. We've done a couple where I applied them together. Um, that creates a few different, it's a, it slows down the process quite a lot um, because I've got to spin them separately and they go through the carding process differently. Um, but yeah, so we do blend them, but we've also, I have done a few twisties where they've um, been a little bit, but more barber's pile where you've got a, a different color alpaca side by side with the, yeah. with the merino. Uh, what micron or micron range? Is the alpaca five-year process or is it something that is not measured? Yeah, it, it is in the micron range. We generally go from around 16 micron, which is super, super fine in an alpaca, up to around 24 to 25 micron. One of the machines that we have here is a dehera. Uh, so with the, the coarser alpaca, we'll put it through our dehera. It's an incredibly slow machine. It takes about two hours per kilo to go through. Um, but it separates the coarser fibres from the, the really soft, soft fibre that the alpaca has. So, yeah, all of our yarns are, are generally super, super fine and super soft and squishy. And if anybody's ever tried them, you'll actually know that, uh, yeah, how soft they are. Belle would like to know if a merino alpaca blend would be okay for someone who finds alpaca a little bit itchy. Yes, if you find our alpaca itchy, I'll I'll refund you your money. I, you won't find our alpaca itchy at all. Um, at, I think it's important game. to remember, everybody, that like sheep, not all alpaca are created equal. <laughs> no, no, and and we, we we get a lot of people saying, "Oh, I've been giving this alpaca fleece; it's really lovely," and you've touched it and say, "No, it's not." It, it's not the great. As they as they get older, they get coarser, they get more guard hair. It gets their micron gets further and further out so they might start yeah. off as a beautiful 16 17 micron little baby alpaca like lara did and as she gets older then her fiber gets coarser yeah okay this is our last question for um for nick which is what yep. is your minimum run for a custom order or blend uh we i don't know <laughs> we, 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 tend, we, we tend not to do too many custom orders um we're we're at the moment we're quite flat out sort of keeping up with our own ranges uh yeah and, and isabel's got a new yarn that she wants me to make and i still haven't got time to make that one for her and i'm married to her so she <laughs> has to come first in the in the line this is the priority yarn nick it has been yeah. great chatting with you this morning um i'm not sure are you booked in for another day as well no, no? i haven't this morning that, that's right didn't know um, we could do multiple bookings maybe uh, that's all right <laughs> see how you go um yeah. it's been fantastic chatting with you and we've all learned so much about alpaca and your processing um i think we have going to be jumping from alpacas over to wendy at beersheba farm can you see the sheet that she's the thumb is up she's ready to go um all righty so I'll, I'll hang around if anybody wants to give us a call or send us an email i'm always happy to answer more questions Fantastic. Thank you. No worries. Um, and if anyone wants to buy anything from the Great Ocean Road Woolen Mills, make sure you go over and hit up um, thebigwoolshow.com and find the Great Ocean Road Woolen Mill. All their stuff is made in-house. Everything is locally sourced except the flags, and that's because yeah. we don't do that here. So these guys are fantastic, and just get in there and just buy all the things to make Nick have to work for more hours. 
exactly. <laughs> uh, Bye, it's, all, it's been great. It's been great. See Have you fun. Later. Bye. Bye. Okay, Wendy is ready to jump in and she is literally hanging with the sheep today. So we're going to pop Wendy in. Hi, Wendy. I'm going to make you full screen. Hello. So that all your sheepies are there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Now, I apologise if my sound is no good. I got out into the paddock and forgot my headphones. <laughs> your sound is fine. Your sound is fine. Good. So There's no wind. Oh, actually, that's an excellent point because the sound probably would have been super dodgy if there was wind. Uh, yeah. um, so what, you're out in the paddock with the sheep I and am. I am. these are literally the sheep that you get shorn to make your beautiful fluffy blends that you have in the Beersheba Farm Big Wool Shop. Yes. These are my Merino and Castledale used, well, except for a couple of ring-in weathers like this one. This is she just came his name the is not Yeah. His his name is not squishy. And his name um, is not squishy. Because his brother is that one there. That's yeah. squishy. Oh, so you've got squishy and not squishy. <laughs> exactly right. And um I've I've had a little bit of trouble keeping the sheep here because while listening because I didn't have the headphones, they um could hear you guys talking like you talking to Nick. And they're just like, yeah. oh, boy, that's strange voices. Where are they coming from? <laughs> yeah, there's not more people around, is there? <laughs> yes, we can't see anyone. So who, who have I got here? This is the um, blah, 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 Polly. Polly? Hello, Polly. Polly. I had Kat, one. A, a saying, Hi, Wendy. Hi, sheepies. Hi, Kat. Um. A, a few years ago, we had I had several um, pet lambs all at once. So we had Polly, who's pregnant with twins at the moment. She's doing oh weeks. my god! And we had Hippo because he was such a little piggy with his drinkies, weren't you, Hippo? That's right. <laughs> hey, Hippo, Wendy, and we had for you to flip your phone sideways, or have you on a holder that won't let you do it? Okay. Let's see. Okay. I'll, I, I, will, I, I will attempt to do it. Apologises for any. There we go. Look at that. Now we've got you full screen. Yes. And it is Sorry a beautiful, it's absolutely stunning day. That's all right. No. Oh, so that's it's a squishy day. He's, squishy's chewing his cud. A sheep chewing their cud is a measure of relaxation. That's their, um, because they have four stomachs. Yeah, and uh, when they chew their cud, they're they're bringing up from uh, their first stomach, yeah, and giving it another go. Right, and so they only yeah. do that when they're relaxed and when they're happy. Pretty much, it's it's a necessary okay. part of of um, their digestion, and if they're really really stressed, then you won't. It's a you know, like you see cows sitting down chewing their cud. It's considered a contentment thing, but um, yeah. It's also important. And yeah. so because I, I, I know nothing about sheep. So when they've got multiple stomachs, is that called ruminators? Is that right? So they have four stomachs. They have the reticulum, the rumen, which is the great big fermentation vat. Yeah. And then they have their ordinary stomachs, which is the abomasum and the omasum. And they're more like what we would consider like our stomachs a bit more. Okay. The rumen's all about fermentation so they can take grass and the associated cellulose and, and digest it, which we can't digest. Yeah. So, um, so they're a lot more efficient. She said, so sheep are like teenagers, they have four stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hollow legs, hollow legs. Hollow legs. <laughs> so. Oh, look at them all just I. I don't know, for some reason I just didn't think they'd just hang out, do you know? I oh, thought well, they're they... reasonably quiet and I, yeah. I, I admit I brought bait so I, I've, I've oh. got their salt lick over there. To... <laughs> so you've tricked them to be on camera. <laughs> and, and what you can't see is that over, there, over the back there there's a dog just sort of sitting there and they're, 
Well, so otherwise they would have wandered off by them. now. What you've done is you've trapped them. You've laid the salt lick trap and then locked them in with the dog. <laughs> yep. Just so we but can that's okay. Them, please. <laughs> that's okay. They're pretty happy. <laughs> so, so this it's been a really good that, season. Oh, that's it, like it looks so green. Um, these guys are what make your Castledale fibre, aren't they? These ones here, yep. This yep. is one of them. And um, I have I have a question. Last night you were mentioning that you had to get back to the dye pots last night. How did that go? Well, I did two colourways and then I was tired. And so hey, I went to bed. Look, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yes, and it was so exciting that it kind of frazzled my brain a bit. So today I have to do uh, get all any of the fleeces that are going on the website, I have to finally get them done this afternoon and get them up. Yeah. Uh, so there'll so be we, some. So we can purchase them. Yes. Danielle Osmond would like to know how many sheep do you have? Uh, well, there's only about, there's only about uh, 150, 200 in here. Not quite. Yeah. So. And that's. But um, I, oh, yeah, I was going to say, that's not all of them, is it? No, no. Way, way um, um, in that direction. Um, I've got my English Leicester and Drysdale sheep. Yeah. And so there's about, you know, there's about a hundred odd over there. So I yeah. cut my numbers back with the drought and then we've yeah. had a amazing year. So all my sheep got really fat and so the microns have blown out a little bit. But... Um, <laughs> Can't can't have everything, can we? So anyway. So when they're like, because I I don't understand anything about the science of microns, other than the fact that that smaller numbers mean finer furs. Um, mm -hmm. They so you said because they got fat, their microns blew out. Does that mean that their their yarn, like their fibre, got thicker? Yeah, um, it's it's related to they've had a lot more protein and all that sort of stuff, and so the 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 micron I mean they don't blow out a massive amount but um, yeah I didn't realize it would make a difference well my 12 micron or 12 and a half micron ones are now 14 and a half <laughs> oh wow that, that, that's a bit so, of a difference yeah that's a bit of a difference <laughs> yes um the payoff it, it, yeah, it's it, it is complicated. Sometimes you know, if you hit on the right genetics, then it won't affect them too much. Yeah, um, it's a there's there's a lot of um, uh, factors really. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I I hadn't experienced it quite so bad, and and I was like, whoops. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, if they get older, maybe it can be a thing, or if they've had a lamb, or you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so there's yeah. there's their trough where I just put all their nice minerals. Nice. Their, um, they'll start lambing in under three weeks, so I've got to keep the minerals up. So how um, many of them are going to lamb? Uh, what was nearly 250 all up. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna yeah. you you you're you're gonna need a lot more you know walking time to get around to all your sheep if you get another two hundred and fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I certainly won't be don't uh, doing any dying in August. It really is a case of uh, if I don't get, I'll try and replace some things after this weekend. But if it's not done by yeah. the end of July, <laughs> yeah, there won't be anything. You're gonna be you're gonna have August. your hands full. Well, hopefully they'll all just pop them out easy peasy and I won't have to interfere and do anything. But um, it's harder interfering with these guys. Like you, you can see as I walk towards them, they go to move away. So yeah. they don't always comprehend that you want to help despite yeah, the that, fact that I, I tell them to, you know, you're in trouble, put your hoof up, I'll come help you, stay cool. But, they just um, don't listen. They really are like teenagers. I know. Yeah, I know. In one ear, out the other. Although the, Cindy, um, Cindy, this one here, her her mum was, I don't know, was the first timer or what, but her mum abandoned her sort of pretty early on. And got a fright. So I'm hoping she's a better mum. She's yep. only got one on board, so she's got not a lot of excuse for being 
you know. Dodge. <laughs> Dodge, mum. Also, if she has any problem because she's a bit fat, then um, it'll be okay because I should be able to touch her. That's yeah. That's sort of part of the problem. Uh, oh. But the English Lester's and Drysdale's, they're all cool. I can all walk up to them sort of pretty much like this and, you know. Give them a scratch. Oh, virtual sheepy scratches. Yep. Oh, there we go. Everyone, you're scratching. Um, how much fibre do you have processed each year? I know you sell fleeces as well. How do you choose which fibre? He just totally licked the camera. How much do you <laughs> How do you choose which gets processed and which stays as fleeces? Um, to be honest, most of the stuff that stays as fleeces, I sell to hand spinners, is stays that way because it's too long to process and still yeah. meets all all the criteria that I sort of think, you know, would I like to spin this? Yeah. And um yeah. and so, you know, it's usually uh, you know, long and it's got you know nice crimp and nice you know nice sort of bright look to it, and um, it's just a nice fibre. So with the amount that I get processed, it varies a little bit. It'll depend yeah. on. Um, at the moment, I've got reserves of scoured fleece. I try and sort of stock it all up, uh, yeah. store it so that I've got a large quantity to send through to hundreds of kilos to send through the scour because they prefer a larger uh, volume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so you sort of get yeah. it all done together and then sort of sit back and wait until you need the next batch process yep. at the top. Yeah. Um, bearing it, I mean, it costs a fair bit of money to get the top all made at once. So I've, you know, like if I had yeah. 500 kilos scoured, I might only um, comb, you know, 150 kilos, yeah. you know, sort of in one year. And it just depends how fast it all goes. At the rate the Duchess is going out the door, I'm going to have to find some more silk and do another run. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, that's a nice problem to have. That's going to be a limited item for a little while. So, you know. Oh. Yeah. So Spanner Chick has said mm. you should set up lamb adoptions. We could pay towards their upkeep and we get to name them and maybe even a little bit of their fleece. <laughs> I get asked this a fair bit. The, 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 the problem with adoptions like in, in that context is that um, sheep drop dead for no good reason sometimes and it's very yeah. distressing for everybody but, of course, I sort of sometimes feel that if I I put somebody you know, else's expectations on a sheep, then, um, the sheep you named Julie has now passed away. <laughs> Do you want to sponsor another sheep? <laughs> yeah, well, it, there is that, but I sort of worry sometimes. You know, you sort of did I just put a hex on this sheep because I singled it out and made it all special? Oh so, no! <laughs> yeah, I can no, understand so, why. So I can what tell you I did, this particular yeah. sheep's quite enjoying this ear rub. Yeah, yeah, this is Cindy again. Cinderella, yeah. short for Cinderella. Yeah. But, um, no, it's it's still a valid thing. And so what I did yep. was um, I came up with a different, slightly different angle, which was more like sponsorship packages for the farm where you can be uh, a friend of Beersheba Farm. And there's yep. um, three different levels. And at least two of those levels involve, um, you know, yes, you could probably name a lamb or something if you want. <laughs> yeah. But it's not yours. Like it's not a, a, you know, one sheep specific. Although I will say that the lamb that's called Charlie has yeah. kind of been semi-adopted by Charlie, the, the bunny fluff lady. You know? Yep. I can imagine that for sure. <laughs> Gosh. So, um, it, anyway, the details of of my friends of Bishaba Farm are on on the website if anyone's interested. So, and um, unfortunately, the farm visits, I mean, yeah, they're out are a little moment. bit tricky to ha have at the moment. Yes, squishy. Do you want some too? Is that what you're up to, you cheeky boy? So I've, I've just noticed a comment in here I, from, I actually from have John, and he's saying, he says, well done for putting this all together. 
but the Beersheba link on the website is not currently working. So I just wanted you to rattle off what your website address is, just if people need to go to it directly. So is it Beersheba? Okay. That's really weird. It did that the other day. Yeah. Yes, you can drop the AU if you want. It, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I own both domains. but um, Oh, okay. So it's a straight redirect. You get both. So it's just BeersshebaFarm.com? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll also let Danielle know. Um, yeah, it so did that the, um, on Thursday and, and then we fixed it and it worked. So maybe it's just because too many people are clicking it and, it, and it's broken. I, I mean, don't know. That as well. There might just be too much traffic on your website. What a horrible yeah. problem. I know, I know. I might have to, as long as I don't have to up my, um, you know, my subscription yeah. thing. <laughs> uh, where am I located? Um, yeah. I'm in northeast Victoria, so we're not far from the town of Benalla, which and we're only about 20, 25 minutes off the Hume Freeway. Okay. Wow, you don't you don't look like you're only 20 minutes off a, off a highway. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Oh, when it's about to rain, a day or so before it's going to rain, we can start to hear it, like you can hear the sounds from the freeway. Oh, okay, yeah. But it's, Gosh. yeah, like it's. 20 k's away. So Danielle's mm -hmm. asking, have you considered getting your fibre processed into yarn? Is it not worth the extra cost? Then she continues on, not that I really want you to because I love spinning the castle, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I would so love to do that. It really comes down to the actual cash on hand. I just don't have the capital at the moment to do yeah. that run. For instance, if I really want to do it sort of properly I'd be wanting to like you need about 200 kilos to run through for the yarn yeah that's pretty pricey because that means if you then got to start off with a lot more than 200 um yeah but yeah yeah if I think it? it's you've got to allow for the wastage as well yep yeah. yeah 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 there's always some level of wastage but then um but, yes, it's on my list. Probably not Merino. There's a few people doing Merino, which is awesome. But yeah. definitely the Castledale and, and um, you never know, maybe if I have lots of silk, I might be able to do a Duchess run, which would be awesome. Wouldn't but that be lovely? I know. I might have to I'm win a lot of I'm not at all. Kelly <laughs> <laughs> says you just got into, into your website, no problems from the Big Wool Show. So it might be a timing problem. Yeah, so. it might be. It might be everybody clicked it all at once kind of thing. Yeah, which, you know, like we're looking at the beautiful sheepies right now. Of course we all need to go on your website and buy yeah. all the fluff, all the Castledale, because we might get mm -hmm. some Polly or some Cindy all mixed into a blend. Well, and actually, no, well, Cindy's fleece probably will go up on the website tonight. Um, <gasps> it's, it's actually she's a bit... She's a little bit, I think she's got English Lester in it. I don't think she's not um, pure Castledale. So hers is. Um, she's a bit curly. A bit stronger. It's yeah. A bit sort of stronger. So that only shown a, a month or two ago, a couple of months ago. So that I don't have a lot on at the moment. So I've but, always um, been curious why do we shear in Australia? Why do we shear sheep in winter when it's bloody cold? And he's like, <laughs> let's take your fur. <laughs> It depends a little bit where you are. It really yeah. does. Um, uh, I found that part of the problem, like I used to shear in November. Yeah. And um, always found that when they lambed, like the stress of lambing and, and, and lactation and everything, oh, they'd get a, a, a weakness in the wool in the middle of the year. So, of course, that ends up being right in the middle of of the fibre staple, squishy. Yes. You boys, you boys are going to have to come out. You've, you've been very naughty. Um, and so I'd seen these other people doing autumn. I thought, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So I've taken to shearing in May for these guys. Yeah. Um, does two things. It eliminates the break in the middle mostly. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is that if, if a sheep – feels the you know like the weather yeah she will put herself into a more sheltered position when she's lambing oh okay yeah. so like if she's all got a great big full coat on 
and it's freezing cold. Well, she doesn't feel it, so she doesn't care. So then she plonks herself out in the open and then the lamb's born out in the oh, open. Oh, yeah. And the, but the lamb can't survive it, but the sheep's like, I don't know what happened. It was fine. Yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, it's – I I mean, hang in it. It's not for everybody. It really depends on where you are and how you okay. manage your sheep. Your, so your sheep, yeah. I have – um, the paddocks that get I I lamb the sheep down in, mm-hmm. like for instance, up on that ridge, they can go either side. Doesn't matter which way the wind's coming from, they can get out of it. Yeah, they can get some shelter. Um, and so after shearing, if it's I mean the weather's really horrid, then I'll put them back in the shed overnight or something. But they're so tough, and the the natural system is that when they're shorn, it doesn't matter what time of year, but when they're shorn, they'll have a surge of lanolin protect, uh, production, which um, coats the fibre and that helps as a water repellent. Mm-hmm. Um, and regardless of when they're shorn, they'll always have a surge of fleece growth as well. Yeah. And so you shear them and then they put on weight. Okay. So it's, they're not going to do that when they're stressed. But as I said, it's not for everybody. You have to be – you do have to be careful and mindful. But um, most – there's a lot of sheep deaths from shearing or post-shearing will be in yeah. the hot weather where you get a cold snap in the hot weather. It's like their blood's yeah. all thin. They're all used to summer and then you get this cold snap and they feel the cold, whereas if you shear they when they're already – yeah. Well, well, this time of year, they've they've already adjusted like metabolically to the cold, and so it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's nasty, but it's not a big shock like going from thirty five degrees down to you know sort of seventeen with you know wind and rain. It's yeah. It's, um, it sounds like we, Queensland weather. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you yeah. As I said, it's not for everyone, and you have to. Um, yeah, you have to work it out for your individual. Yeah. Yep, yep. But oh, I mean, I've lost. Oh. We had some shocking weather in February, ten or so years ago, and in in February, and it went from like forty something down to about seventeen in the space of four hours. Rain solid for two days. My sheep were okay, but I actually lost five alpacas that had been shorn in the November, like four months before. Oh wow! Would never Gosh. have ever dreamed that that, that, that would be a problem yeah so it's yeah. it's finding a system that works for you and your sheep and, and yeah uh, so now when they lamb i don't have to worry about them getting having really long wool and getting yeah stuck on their backs because their wool's all heavy and wet and yeah and, um, yeah, no, this sounds – now that you've explained it, I understand it. And, and so thank you for answering that question for me because it was just something I was always sure. really curious about. It was just like, but they've got a natural woolly coat. <laughs> but it makes That's perfect they sense. Do. And, like, and, yeah. they do. That woolly coat gets in the way sometimes and um, and it also can affect them metabolising to the, to the warmer weather and the cooler weather. So, yep. yeah. When yeah, and, and then you have um, different um, – you know, your own sort of seasonal when you lamb, when you, you know, do everything. So. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so you have got your Castle Dales running out the door. So if people want your Castle Dale, they need to get in now and they need to, you know, go and – no, not Castle Dale, sorry, Duchess. Your Duchess is running out yeah. the door. Yeah, yeah. So if they want Duchess, yeah. they have to jump on right yeah, now and easy. go and get Duchess. Yeah. Um, and keep an eye out for any sort of new batches because once that's done, that's sort of done until you can get another run made. Um, which <laughs> is, you know, that's a nice problem to have, but not yeah, but if you don't want. go. Just don't go through so much. <laughs> <laughs> I better go look um, at something so I've got some left for myself. <laughs> yeah, you might have to just hold back like a little pile and be like, right, this is it. This is staying for me. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> we know it won't happen. Um, and then. But then you've also got your beautiful, beautiful Castle Dale, which is just gorgeous to spin. And so make sure everybody that you go and have a look and see if there's any colours that you like. You can get to Wendy's web store uh, through the Big Wool Show uh, and Beersheba, Beersheba Farm and you'll get some fluff from 
these gorgeous animals that that Wendy's out here patting and it's just amazing it's so cute thank you so much for taking your camera out into the farm today Wendy that's okay I'm sorry I can't manage to get um, Gilbert in shot this morning as well but he's way over on the hill way over there so um <laughs> by the time I do that would be you wouldn't want to be walking with me I'm sure I'd you know the camera would be going up and down yeah no worries <laughs> well thank you so much for your time this morning we have got okay. um I'm just checking if we've got any other questions in here um we've got Leanne saying hey hey good morning all look there is my yarn standing in a paddock hello yarn growers I love you <laughs> that's yes. such a beautiful because that's the thing. That's that's what they are. They're little yarn growers, aren't they? That's right. Um, yep. We've got a couple take more it off and they grow some more. Here for you before we run away. Loving seeing Wendy's sheep, listening to her infinite knowledge of shepherdessing. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Friday catching the same thing to Wendy. Um, I need to learn how to say this name because it's. Colhoun has messaged a couple of times, and I'm sorry if I'm destroying your name, but it was Colhoun King has said, yes, it's great seeing sheep scritches. Um, Cal Kelly Pyle is saying thank you for the sheepies. Um, Danielle Osmond has said thank you so much. Love seeing the sheep. And also Lisa Chapman, thank you, beautiful sheep, and Wendy for sharing your world with us. So... Right. Um, as I said just before, if you want to get your own little piece of Beersheba Farm into your house, then you need to jump over to the, the Big Wool Show and get your hands on Beersheba Farm because Duchess is divine. I've personally got some and I think you guys need some too. And um, just, oh, actually, Catherine's just jumped a question in. Do you use any modern technology to help you track your sheep? Um, no, well, I don't have any really much money. These these tags are the new ones you're required by law to have in, in that they have a microchip in them and that means that when they go to um, off-farm, that's supposed to be a traceability thing. But in terms mm -hmm. of... Yeah, you know, like I've got a drone out there looking at them. No. Yeah. No, yeah. no drones. Um, automatic drafting would be handy sometimes. Um, <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. All right. Well, Wendy, Cindy, I think you need to go and eat something else. Yes. They need to go and, and eat. We've got Jennifer from the Great Southern, um, oh, my brain just quit, the Great Southern Yarn. <laughs> Her special guest, Mary Lou Egan, are lined up waiting to to come in. I just need some thumbs up from both of you ladies to make sure that you're ready to go and that you can hear. Fantastic. All right. Um, Wendy, we're going to chat with you again tomorrow, aren't we? I think Wendy has frozen right at that time. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring in now Jennifer from Great Southern Yarn and Mary Lou Egan. Um, hello. hello to both of you. How are you hello. going? Good. Hi, Hello. Mary Lou. Hi, thank can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. No problems all right. at all. It's a, it's very hard to follow a sheep. It's I'm very not, hard. I'm not as I know, cute. The same thing. I, it's really unfair. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm so sorry. I, 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 I didn't plan it that way. I didn't want to make it a lot harder. It's just, Wendy yesterday decided she was going to show a sheep today, so we said yes, please. Oh, no, I loved Absolutely. watching it. It was wonderful. And yeah. Wendy's sheep are just divine as well, honestly. Just, yeah. I'm. What I'm going to do is, um, ladies, I'm going to jump out so you girls can take the big screens. Okay. And um, I don't, can I do that and that? No, mm -hmm. I can only choose one of you at a time. All right, well, hang on a Jennifer's second. Jennifer's going to go first. All right. So Jennifer oh, can hi. go first. All righty. Hi, everybody. Um, it's lovely sitting here chatting to you, not on a farm, unfortunately, but in my living room. And uh, with me, I'm very excited, um, is Mary Lou Egan, who is from St Paul, Minnesota, and she'll 
explain a little bit more about where St. Paul, Minnesota is in America. Um, Mary Lou is the author of Drop Dead Easy Knits, and everybody loves uh, an easy knit. Um, yeah, you like a challenge as well, but it's always good to have an easy one on the go. Um, and Mary Lou, we met in January in Phoenix, Arizona, and Mary Lou fell in love with um, Great Southern Yarn and has done two designs for us. So we have the beautiful Brindabella shawl here. Oh, and gorgeous. It is lovely. And also the Bedangara beanie. And I have, I have a couple of different. There's a nice little rustic baby one, and this is a, a large one in our new Snowy Mountains Alpine Way. It's a fantastic way of showing off a variegated yarn. Um, now, for those of you who don't know very much about Great Southern Yarn, we are 100% Australian yarn and a member of the Fiber Australian Fiber Collective. Um, and we have to be able to prove that um, from uh, the uh, moment that the uh, fleece leaves the sheep's back that it's all 100% processed here in Australia. Um, and we hand dye. Um, we've got um, a fantastic team of hand dyers who work with us. Um, we've had Anna Humphreys and Catherine Lee and Rachel Lays. So we're very fortunate in having those three wonderful people help with the dyeing and they're all wonderful team members with us. Um, we have been promoting the Brinda Bella Shaw uh, just recently in our four ply, single spun four ply, and I've just got here three of our beautiful new colorways. So we've got Mount Selwyn, which is this beautiful silvery grey. Um, this is a beautiful, gorgeous, rich teal, um, and that's called Bokoff's Hut. And this one, which is a really soft blush of a colour, and it's called Tiffin Villa. Um, and they would look fantastic together in the Windabella shawl. Um, Mary Lou, do you want to hop in and, and say hi to everybody? Hello, all. Um, yes, I met Jennifer at, um, oh my gosh, I didn't think you were going to see my messy office, but okay. It's, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's the Zoom world. Because um, in a minute, I'm going to put the, the iPad down so you can see working. But I was so thrilled. Uh, it was kind of a a dead show and walking around and I was attracted by the colors of the great Southern yarn and they had a big basket and I was standing talking to Jennifer and Andrew and I just kept digging my hands deeper and deeper into the basket as we talked and fondling the yarn. Of course we can't do that right now, but oh my goodness, this yarn is fabulous. It's so soft and the colors were so incredible so i went away and i i was teaching classes and i came back and talked to them some more and sweet talked them into giving me some yarn to take home to swatch with and it's just been a great it's been great fun to deal with them i'm i'm very uh i'm very taken with the sort of sustainability and ethical aspect of this I'm trying to get into the camera here um which I actually have heard that all along with the show. I've been listening to as much as I could, and it's been really great to hear people talk about that. And I think maybe in Australia, you all are kind of way ahead of us as far as really caring about how this all works with the environment. I do know some folks here that do that, but it's really nice. So I live in the north central part of the United States. Minnesota is up near the Canadian border. So the upper Midwest, it's the very top of the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River starts here. And you've probably heard some sad news about Minneapolis, St. Paul recently, which is this is where the George Floyd murder happened and the unrest that kind of kicked off this worldwide response um, to the entrenched racism that's out there. So yes, that was about five miles from my house and um, it's, 
things are quiet now, but it, it, it put us on the map for sure. Um, anyway, that's where I am right now. I'm, I'm jealous of you all and your weather because it's about 95, which is about what, 35 centigrade? Here, yeah, it's so hot. <laughs> Okay. The thought of wearing wool is not attractive to me right now. I'm wearing a cotton top that I made right now. Um, but anyway, it's been really fun. And the colorways and, and that are so great. The other thing about this yarn, and just in case I forget to say it, is it's so soft that I was suspicious that it would pill. Because I'm sure you've all had that experience of soft yarn. And you make it and it's like, wow, this is great. And then three weeks later, it's full of pills. So... I made a swatch and I, I dragged it over Velcro. I put it in my pocket with my keys and carried it around for a while. I actually even pinned it like under my armpit. This one you can see, cause you know, that's like where you get the most rubbing and three or four weeks, I still had like no pills. So that's really something to have in a yarn that's so beautifully dyed. It's so soft and it really seems to resist pilling. So that that's a big plus in my book so um after taking the swatches and and talking with andrew and jennifer and bringing these things back i decide i was starting to design now my i've been teaching and designing for a long time and my sweet spot is easy like yeah i want something that looks really good but it's not complicated there's a lot of beautiful knitting patterns out there that are complex and that's not me. I feel like there's more of a gap of the kind of, you can watch Netflix, you can hang out with your friends, you can have a glass of wine and only have to stop once in a while and look at it. So I'm right now, I'm going to try to turn my camera so that it faces my desk, my table here. And let's see how that, how's that working? Yeah, that's, that looks good. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I guess. All right. So uh good all right so here's yeah jennifer said here's the here's my drop dead easy knits book <laughs> so as you can see that's my sweet spot drop dead easy knits try to get that in there okay um and you're saying it's available as an ebook it is it's available as an ebook i don't know what the setup is dang this split screen has got me not working so well okay well we'll do our best here um, yeah, it was, it, it was us like four ninety nine as an ebook on Amazon recently. And so, I don't know, that's, that's a lot of, it's a lot of patterns for $4 and 99 cents. Yeah, that's great. So here's, so uh, my design process is, um, I, I start something and then if it's too complicated or I find it too irritating, I'll stop. Mary, I was sorry, I've just jumped in for just a second. Sure. I just, I put you on the full screen, so if you want to just double check that you've got everything in shot that you want in shot, we just okay, can't see. see what you're what you're working on okay, with your yarn. I can't That's all. see. Okay, so let's see. This is. <laughs> let's see. That's not so good. Let's see if I do this. There's a little. There we go. We can see a bit more of what's going yeah. on now. Yep. Is that big? Okay. Let's see. I can. I've got this like see some of that. gooseneck thing I'm trying to get in place here. So how, how's that? There you go. We can see lots of yarn now. That's cool. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. Okay. Sorry. That's the idea. No, I'm glad because I'm, I have my laptop set up so that I could sort of watch it as a monitor, but there's a delay on YouTube. So I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> so good. Um, so I was very attracted by these super saturated colors and, um, it's the navy is Judy Kassab and the kind of burgundy is it uh, Thea Proctor? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. And so I had this idea that I was going to do uh, a shawl with it that would have mosaic in it. But if you look at the mosaic in this, it's you can't. It's not enough contrast. It's beautiful, but it's not enough contrast. So that kind of pushed me towards the. Um, the bigger runs of color that are in Brenda Bella. And the, so they, the other thing about when you're looking at colors, this is just, I'm kind of rambling here about tips. 
is when you've got super saturated colors or dark colors that you want to put together and they look like they could go together so we'll take a few of these like look at they look like they could go together take a picture of them with your phone and i'm going to see i did this and let's see if i can get this on the camera too um and then after you take the picture So can can you see that? Is that can you see that on the phone, Chantel? Just yep. bring it in. Yeah, there we go. Right there. Okay. okay. So do you look at that? Okay, I can see some contrast there. And then this is an iPhone, but I'm sure you can do it on on anything. And go to edit. And then drag it, drag it push over. Push it under to, just a little bit more. There we go. If you just push it across mm -hmm. just a bit more. No, no, down. More down. down a little. Way. Like that? Down can a little bit it? more? No, we can't see it. There oh, we go. There. There? there? Okay. Yep, there. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So now see, I, I, turned, I just slid it over to mono. And see yeah. how little contrast there is with those yarns? Yeah. So if you're going to yeah. do color work or you really want to be able for something to pop, that's not going to work. So that's a good way when you're choosing colors. You're standing at a booth or, that's you know, brilliant. in a yarn store. To, to do that because I'm, I'm sure everybody's had the you set something up or you do some color work and then you can't see the colors correctly you know they just they don't pop in the way they did in the two balls so okay there's that so now Brenda Bell I don't know I think Brenda Bell is a really perfect beginner lace pattern you know it's there's there's no long cast on you're not one of these edges let's see if we can can you see this here Sadly, yeah, my, my Brenda Bella has not come back from the photographer yet. So you start at this very narrow part here and start increasing as you go along. So you really, you're adding as you go and it makes the edges very stretchy and you don't have to worry about, is my cast on too tight? So that's one thing. And then each of these sections of lace in the Brenda Bella is a variation on a traditional pattern called, it's a Shetland lace pattern. It's called Old Shale or Feather and Fan. There's disputes about that, so I'm not gonna argue, but. And so each lace section in the pattern can show you by just a few changes in the placement of the yarn overs and how you decrease, it can really alter the appearance of the lace. So I know a lot, of, if you're a beginner and you're afraid of lace, this is a great thing because it's not super fine yarn. So you're not going to be struggling with teeny tiny yarn sliding all over. It's beautiful and soft. It's a really manageable weight. And the very first lace section, which can you see this, Chantel? Can you see? Yeah, we can see. Okay. Yep. So the very first lace section, and I did this in the um, the is is the DK the five ply, Jennifer? No, DK is eight ply. Eight ply. Sorry, I'll, I'll okay. get it straight. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get, my Aussies, I'll get my Aussie speak going. You will. I think, I think most of us Aussies can translate anyway. I think we're all so used to using the, U, the US weights that if you said fingering or sport, we all, we don't, okay. we'd know what yeah. you mean. Okay, good, good. Yeah. So if I slip up, it won't be too bad. No, <laughs> that's right. So we'll, we'll still understand. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So this is a, the first repeat so let's say it's 58 stitches it's an 18 stitch repeat so it's simple and um i blew up the chart that's in the pattern each chart in the pattern each lace section has a chart and a row by row and so if you're really um if you haven't used charts and you're a little intimidated by them it's a good way to learn too because you can look at the row by row and then see where it is on the chart then you, you yeah, can see how it lines up. So you could, you'll, oh, if my yarn overs are not lined up like that, then I've done something wrong. Whereas when you look at the line by line, you can't always tell that. So I, I think it's, I like having both of them in a pattern. So this pattern has both of them. So you can refer back and forth. Another tip about charts, well, A, so you can blow it up like this um, on your computer or print it out large is if you're having trouble, this is a pretty simple chart, so you shouldn't have, it shouldn't be too complicated. But I like to use this like post-it tape. I think it's called redaction tape. They use it in offices. 
and take a piece of this and put it over the row. Don't put it under the row that you're working on, but put it over the row that you're working on. So you, you know when you're looking, okay, this is the row I'm doing. And it's, it's less, uh, you're less likely to have your eye wander. And that's a, a little chart tip. Charts always start from the bottom and work their way up. You go right to left. This is flat, so you'll be going right to left, left to right, just like you're turning and knitting. Another tip for working with lace charts, with lace, is to figure out what your repeat is. In this case, it's an 18 stitch repeat. And put a marker between each, each repeat. I think you can see I tried to put some bright colored markers here so you could see them. So between each 18 stitches, I have a marker. So but that serves a few purposes. Um, it, it reminds you that you're gonna be switching. You don't get, I tend to get an automatic pilot. And so if I bump into the marker, then I won't be. But also if you see that in this, so this repeat, let's see, it should end slip slip knit knit one and then you're ready to go back to that if you are ready to you you bump up against the marker and you're here and you're missing the stitches to do a slip slip knit and a knit one you know you've done something wrong but you don't have to go all the way back to the beginning of the row you only have to go back to the last marker mm. so probably you guys don't make mistakes ever but oh never <laughs> I'm like I'm queen Never of the markers. I have to markers every repeat for every yeah. project. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah. it's a great it's thing. Sad times if I don't. No, it's absolutely, and it's interesting that that people don't you know think of it. Or I actually had a knitting student say to me once that that it was like she was too good a knitter to use markers. She didn't need to use them. I thought, well, okay. Uh, <laughs> knock yourself out when you bump into a problem yeah um, but and then the other thing that is a really uh, a good this is true for Brenda Bella but also if you're choosing a beginning lace pattern always choose one that has a wrong side that has no shaping I mean no um no lace. yarn overs no decreases it's just yeah no lace it's just either a plain knit or a plain pearl row yeah. and that you can always kind of get back on track and mm -hmm. it's i think of it as like a resting row okay i did all those Absolutely. yarn overs now i can just pearl back and relax so if yeah. you're if you want to get into lace that's a really i think an easy way to start doing that um I would really recommend this show for anybody who's thinking of um you know, trying lace for the first time um, because the, there's only um, 12 rows of, of lace in each repeat except for the, the last one. So it's, it's really quick and easy and not at all intimidating. It's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, that's music you to my ears. <laughs> Can I do what? Sorry? So do you have kits for this shawl on your website? We do have kits for the shawl on the website. We've got different colorways um, available as well. So if you're not sure about choosing colors or which ones go with which, we've got quite a few um, selections on, on the website. So you can go go there, check out kits, and uh, um, and choose the colors that you want. Or oh, that's awesome. Because yeah. like if you really made the kit, then what Mary Lou was showing us at the start, if you're a bit nervous about picking the colours that contrast, you've already done all the work and they can just pick up the yeah, straight. Exactly. Yeah. But I love that tip with the going into the mono and doing the contrast. Yeah, oh that's a, that's a fantastic that. tip. Brilliant. Um Kelly has a question, which is um, what was the name of your book? Um, was it Drops Best Knits or Drop Easy Knits, was it? Drop, drop, drop Dead Easy. Let's see. Can we get it in oh, the drop dead, easy drop dead Easy Knits? There we go. Okay. Awesome. Um, Dom Carr is saying that they've already bought the kit and they can't wait to try. Oh, fantastic. Lovely. And, um, uh, and Dom Carr also said, what a great idea to use markers between each repeat. I always end up having to unpick to the start of the row. Yeah, you'll only do that a few times before you start putting markers in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. 
Oh, that's it's, awesome that you've already got the kits there. So if you want those kits, you can go yeah. to Great Southern Yarn and there's a link to their website from the Big Wool Show website. So you can just link straight through and then find beautiful kits for this gorgeous pattern. Wow. Thank Sorry, you. I didn't know. Well, thank I didn't you. Check if there were kits, so um, I will be quiet. <laughs> no, the kits are beautiful, and Jennifer did. I mean, the colors, the new, the colors in that new snowy mountain color That's was a snowy mountain uh, range. Yeah, they're so beautiful. Um, oh, they're really, yeah. I mean, they're lovely. Well, um, Catherine Lee uh, has uh, come up with most of these great colorways for the snowy mountains, and um, she's just done a wonderful job with them. And of course, the Snowy Mountains, it's a great inspiration. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, the, um, Jennifer sent me pictures and I was like, oh, ooh, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> someday, <laughs> someday we'll be able to travel again. <laughs> someday, I know. I know. So let's see how we've got a few minutes left. Jennifer, should I pull up the picture of the beanie? Yeah, do. Okay, so I have a beanie here. So this is called the Bodangara beanie, and I'm saying it right. I was calling it yeah. the Bodangora beanie, and they were laughing at me and told me that I had to learn to speak Australian better. So <laughs> it's, the Bodangara, that, it's the Bodangara beanie. Bodangara. <laughs> it's made with yeah. the yen. Okay. <laughs> so this, um, let's see, can you see the stitch pattern here yeah i love that combination so oh, that's beautiful look at those colors together uh, these colors it's so it's such beautiful yarn so here's the let's see so this is the yarn in the skein wound yeah yeah and then this is with the slip stitch color pattern and this is called meadow southern see tell me what the colorway is Jennifer. <laughs> I think that one's Bridge and Curve, unless it's Stormy Sea Wave. It's Stormy Sea Waves. That's Stormy it. Sea Wave. Yeah. So, um, and I will, I don't know that I have time to do this now, but we'll be back tomorrow and we can do, I'll do a little more talking about the slip stitch colorways. But this is also super simple. The pattern comes with both weights. So you could have the five ply sport weight or the eight ply DK all in the same pattern. Um, and it really shows off these gorgeous colors. And it's named for the Mount Badangara, Mount Badangara be Mount Merino, um, which is where the Merino comes from. Okay. That I don't know if you heard Jennifer talking. She has a, there's another little bit where you're talking about the SRS Merino. Maybe you want to talk about that now, but it's, it looks like a beautiful place and it's a special flock yeah. or do you say a mob of sheep? I think mostly we say mob. Yeah. We like mob. I know it's got, you know, it sounds like Al Capone for you. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, I am originally from New Jersey, so the mob means something very different. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we have mobs of kangaroos and mobs of sheep. So, yeah. yeah. And we do. We've got about 350 that are looked after for us. So, to get our lovely... Nice long staple. So we have about a hundred mil staple, which yeah, is it's yeah. And what's attractive too is you tell people, well, you know, it's it's so soft and it's look. It also, you know, it's it's non mules It's naturally resistant to fly strike, and that's something that folks who are interested in the more um, sustainable type of and and you know kind to of animals. So it's yeah. it's really fabulous. Um, and okay, so you can do it. And then I just did a little mixing and matching because I had, I don't know what this uh, olive -y colorway is called, That's Jennifer. Ellis Rowan. Okay. It's really, it's very nice. And I think this could also be a great stash buster pattern. Yeah. You know, if you've got leftovers or maybe with those quokka tails. Do you have the quokka tails on the website? Yeah. yeah. Oh, do we have the quokka tails on the website? No, but if you order... Um, this weekend, um, you will get a free quokka tail, which are our little 25 gram skeins, mini skeins. Yeah. So, awesome. yeah, really fun. So I learned what a quokka is. So I'm, I'm really, I'm really getting there. 
Yeah. Oh, you are you basically Australian now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, dinner, Mary Lou. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> So, yeah, this has been, I, it's been really a great uh, getting to know them and learning more about the yarn. And, and this wool show has been great. I mean, and, and good on you, Chantel, for organizing this because oh, I really I'm miss going to this. I'm just the face. Danielle, <laughs> the organizer. She's the one yeah. who's done all the hard work. Danielle's been wonderful. It's because um, we all, Mary Lou, we all should have been down in Bendigo this weekend for um, the Australian Wool and Sheep Show. But, oh, um, we're not allowed. So no, no traveling. Living rooms and or farms. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, um, Danielle, who is is hiding in the wings, very carefully making sure I don't put her on camera right this second. Um, is um, she's the brain? This is her brainchild. I just happened to know how to live stream, so that's that's where I put my hand up. That was it. Okay. Well, let's see. <laughs> that's all I'll done. see if I can I um, get back on here to say goodbye because I think we're getting and watching the time. We are. We're getting to the pointy end, but you've got a few. You've got. You can keep going so a little go. bit. Nika <laughs> hasn't turned up yet, so you are more than welcome to just you know keep going for a little bit longer if you like. Okay. We have a question here from Catherine. Um, it says, Mary Lou, do you have any advice for a new knitter or experienced crocheter trying out your sock patterns in your Drop Dead Easy book? Oh. I do. The um, heavy sock that, um, and you actually, you could do this with, and I, cause it wouldn't, it wouldn't felt. Let's see if I can, I'm going to take this off of the little stand and see if this, is this better? Can you actually see something better here? No, yeah. I haven't done anything good. Okay, so the um, I'll just put it on me then. Here we go. I, I'm really very good at this, putting my finger in front of the camera. <laughs> um, there's a, there are two socks line. in that. There's two socks in that. One of them is uh, like a heavyweight sock. It's a really good pattern to start with. And you, in fact, could use the um, DK weight of the great southern yarn company wool to do that okay. um and you can do a single one or you can do a double one because sometimes they get really soft yarn i've made really soft socks that maybe i just have sweaty feet but i've actually felted them in my boots oh, oh. but this would not do that and it would be it's really nice because it's heavy you're not starting at eight stitches to the inch so it's yeah. a really good, a really good way to start. There's lace ones in there. I wouldn't recommend that as a first. No. Yeah. No, definitely not as your first sock. Your first um, sock. We have another. We have another couple of questions here. Okay. Great. Um, Andrew would like to um, to know. He says, "Hello, Helen from Mossville Alpacas. Where does Great Southern Yarns get your hokaya from?" We get our uh, wakaya from Moscow alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Andrew, that was a self-serving plug and I fell for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they call them Dorothy Dixes, you know, in Parliament where they <laughs> Yeah. He's, he's giving me a prompt to say he thank you very knew. much to Moss Bell because they're um, in Tasmania and um, they um, have prize-winning fleece and they have the most beautiful um alpaca farm but the country is just divine and um yeah so we're very very pleased to be um, getting our wakai from there um we also use um some suri and that comes from banjo ridge which is up here in dungog which is about an hour west of um, newcastle yeah so, yeah and Jane would like to know where to buy your Drop Dead Easy Knits book from. Uh, you, I mean, you can get it at yarn stores here in the States, but I'm not sure that's true in Australia. Um, and you can get it on Amazon. But again, I, I, you know, sometimes from country to country, it's different. Yeah, it might be. We might be able to do it. We can still shop from Amazon USA as well. So, okay. Yep. So you can um, definitely get it from it. Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Cahoon, I'm trying a different pronunciation. Cahoon King has said, what is the colorway used in the beanie? I missed the name. Stormy, uh, Stormy Sea Wave. Okay, and the, the band was? Ellis Rowan. There we go, all right. Um, we've got another comment here. It's been amazing for all of us that generally don't get to the Bendigo show to check you all out. Hints of new Australian fibre people to follow, admire and learn about. Thank you all. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for dropping in. And Catherine has said, thank you. Uh, great patterns and beautiful yarn. I'm loving the teal and the rustic oranges. Ah, oh, yeah. And you'll have to say what those colourways are. But is it teach this, iron this tray? Teal, this teal is, um, God, I always get confused. This is um, brand new and it's called Brockhoff's Hut. And um, there are oranges. Okay. So the little bean. Oh, the wow. Band. The band is Elizabeth Cummings and the variegated body of the beanie is the artist studio. Beautiful. So my original uh, range, which is named after Australian female painters and their images, their paintings. Yeah. And they're beautiful. The, the, uh, the Great Southern Yarn website has a lot of, they've got stories about the artists and pictures of the paintings that they were named after. And that, it was very fun for me to go look at those. That because was I hadn't that, heard of any of them. Yeah, that was something that we learned about from Jennifer during her interview that is up on the big uh, Wool Show website is we had a big discussion about how her colour names are inspired and the amazing uh, female artists that she uses for all her colour inspiration. <laughs> yeah, try and keep you know, I think Jennifer you know, has a very that. strong artistic streak. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I, feel, I think I'm living uh, living vicariously through the yarn the yarn names. That's <laughs> but um, um, and actually this the the teal the new one the Brockhoff's heart. Um, yeah. Joyce Brockhoff was um, one of the female pioneer skiers in Australia. So, oh. And she's got a, a hut named after her. So and the colourways in the Brenda Bella that I held up here. Um, we've got the variegated one is Mary Slide, and it is just beautiful. It's one of our top sellers now. And the contrast is um, Yarrangabilly Caves, which I've got just here. So oh, I'll, I'll add one other thing about those colors and the um, Brenda Bella is that I also designed it so that it would use one skein of each color. Yeah. Or you could mix and match oh, cool. a bit because um, having worked in a yarn store and taught, you know, nothing is more irritating than people buying, to have to buy a whole skein of beautiful yarn and pay for it and you only use 10 grams. Right. 10 grams. <laughs> <laughs> it's so annoying. And so. I really appreciate like these one or two skein patterns that are just like you get to use the majority of the skein. Yeah. 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 There and Jennifer even yeah. in the in the sample she's got, she moved around some of the late the lace section colorways and she still had plenty of yarn. Yeah. 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 Um Jennifer is uh, Jennifer Weller is asking, sorry, I've come in late. What was Mary Lou's book's name? Desperate for very easy sock patterns, stay warm <laughs> <laughs> It's called Drop Dead Easy Knits. We'll have, to, we'll have to get some of them shipped over. Oh, you could have them on your website? Yes, that sounds yeah. like an excellent idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, stay warm. To... Oh, I'm not having any trouble staying warm. <laughs> <laughs> Being on the other side of the world, it's high summer here. Well, yes. um, in fact, we've just had um, really cold weather for, for Newcastle, really cold weather. It's been like, you know, 15 degrees and um, everyone's walking around all rugged up and it's it's great break out you know the warm woolly i was just sitting here thinking it's actually a bit cold in here and then i realized i haven't actually turned the heater on <laughs> <laughs> you're probably cold at 20 degrees Chantel. up in i mean in, that that's also probably true <laughs> <laughs> up in sunny queensland um it has been 
amazing talking to you both today and we'll get to talk to you again tomorrow. Sadie yeah. from Green Sea Yarns is here to have a chat with us now. So um, if anyone wants to buy the beautiful kit that is the combination of Mary Lou's pattern and um, Great Southern Yarns, then jump over to the Big Wool Show, follow the links and go grab your kit so that you too can get to make something stunning and gorgeous that's inspired by uh, amazing female artists, but then put together by two amazing female artists. Oh, so, thank you. Um, you're, you're welcome. Too kind. What, beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. So, I will talk to you both tomorrow, you, and yeah. um, and we'll catch up again then. Yes, it's thank been really so fun. Thank you so much. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Chantel. Bye bye. Bye. Hello, Sadie. How are hello, you going? Hello, Chantel. <laughs> <laughs> had a few technical problems getting my lights now. <laughs> uh, no, a few problems getting on today, apparently. So. No, it's all good. I was going to say, you need to wiggle over a bit, but you're on it. You've got it. Yeah, everybody, okay. this is Sadie from Green Tea Yarn. Sadie Hello, is um, kind of another amazing dyer who is joining us today. Um, Sadie, how are you going? Are you enjoying I'm being part of the show? It's amazing. I've been like busy. My I have my phone, it sets to buzz, and every time something comes through, it goes. Zzz, zzz. <laughs> so it kind of I got very excited yesterday. I was absolutely, I mean, I had a, a sale at 1.30 in the morning. Who's shopping for yarn at 1.30? <laughs> I I actually like I mean for a start, I have been known to shop at 1.30 in the morning. But oh, okay. I yeah. also noticed some really unusual usual times of orders I had one come through at like half past 12 and then one came through at 4 a.m I'm like somebody couldn't it's sleep amazing. No, it's amazing um, I, I did um I my husband always says you know don't shop at 10 30 because that's my peak buying time is 10 30 at night <laughs> after, <laughs> after my evening tipple I have I have oh, yes, when, when like, you know, I will I will just buy that thing <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, I so, just yeah. so you had some beautiful colors that that you've released for us this weekend. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm very much into blues and greens uh, right now, and uh, having come through a pinks and purples phase, <laughs> so everything I'm doing is blues and greens, um, and I'm just I'm just loving it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've got some questions. We've got a little, someone has asked a question for you. Elise has asked, hi, Sadie. I'm so grateful for the Big Wool Show for introducing your yarn to me. I made a purchase last night and now cannot wait for my fluffy mail. Do you have to dye the yarns purchased or are they ready to ship? Well, most of the things I tried to make sure on the website were um, ready to ship. So I just have to go through all the orders, collate them all, and mail out, um, assuming that everything on the website is correct. We did go through it twice to make sure that everything um, was there. Yeah, sometimes um, that's, that's a fun one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it's easy. You think you've done it. You think you've done it right, and then you're just like, how did they order that? There isn't one of those there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, especially, I mean, I've been making up sets, and so that takes out from the regular stock colours sometimes, and that yeah. completely messes up the 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 tally. Uh, the tally. Um, but I have this morning because I've sold out of so much, um, which has been wonderful. I've now made them die to order, and it okay. says on the item description, you know, this is die to order or die to order. Um, yeah. And so those ones are died to order. If you ordered yesterday, you probably um, are good. And that's just a question of me collating all the orders and, and getting them out. So, um, yeah. 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 So I'm, I, I actually prefer um, to have it done ahead of time um, because I find die to order rather stressful. <laughs> Especially if something happens to like the water acidity or something and oh, then the colors anything. are just not working. Anything. Like, somebody wanted that one. Yeah. Yeah, anything. Um, right for I rescan every um thing I dye. I'm a messy dyer. Things get all kind of messed up, and if I yeah. have a tangle, um, that basically occupies the machine until it's untangled. Yeah, um, 
that can set me back um, two, days, two or three days even. So, um, oh, wow. yeah, um, I, I do try to be good about getting them out in, t in two weeks is my what I aim for. But every now and again, um, I die to order. I have a problem and um, or the color lots way off or. Um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, but at least you've got your dye to order now up. So if people missed out yesterday on colours that they absolutely wanted, with just a smidgy bit of patience, they will still get them. Yeah, they'll still get them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's great. Um, I mean, I have a, a wide range of in-stock colours, you know, stock what I call stock yep. colours, that are repeatable colours. Mm -hmm. um, the set tend to be made up of um, repeatable colours and then individual kind of unique skeins. Yeah, um, one of the kinds. Yeah, they didn't fit the regular colour. So those, um, the, the sets tend to be unique and, um, and not repeatable. Okay, so that's a good note for everybody. So if you are tossing up over what you want to buy, then head more and you've got set you're tossing up between sets and the skeins probably go lean more towards the sets because some of those colors may not come back whereas the skeins if they've got a a, a um dyed to water notice you know that they can be made just how you want them whenever you want them so because sometimes we have to think about that don't we? we 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 really do want to buy all the things um but the reality is sometimes we have to think and plan our shopping a little differently than what we'd just like to do i mean my credit card says i have to do that yeah, you know and like like we have um dye lots uh the the dyes we use also have dye lots yeah <laughs> and sometimes that can completely um a new pot of dye can be a completely different color and i've yeah. had to retire a few colors um that i count as stock colors or counted as stock colors i've had to retire those because the dyes changed yeah um i recently had a big problem with a navy i have a i have two navies um dreams of a starry night was my one of my original colors and i kept having that um that particular colorway, that navy that I used, it's a blend of different dyes, but the navy that I used as the main color for that um, kept splitting on me. And that's when the dyes oh. divide up into um, different colors, like a gray and a kind of a rust color. It's kind of interesting. And I actually invented a new color during that time called split personality because of the dye <laughs> splitting. Oh. So, um, that's awesome and, and it's to be made. sometimes it can be yeah. so frustrating but it's good that you just roll with it because sometimes well, what like when do? the color doesn't do what the color's <laughs> supposed to do it can be really frustrating is dyed to order if it's in stock it's not a problem but when someone has ordered dreams of a starry night they're not pleased if they get a uh, split personality <laughs> <laughs> That's actually an excellent point. <laughs> so, but um, it's, it's just it's one of the challenges of uh, being a dyer. I mean, I'm sure you know that, and it's um, yeah, it's, it's fun sometimes. It's you know, but you just have to um, go with the flow. And people are really and generally you very. Create, you things. get to just create something different. Yeah, you do. It's fun. It really is fun. So. Yeah, oh, yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Sadie while she's here with us? So make sure you uh, pop in your questions into the chat here so that we can throw them at Sadie and try and flummox her. No, let's not flummox her. That's not fine. Um, <laughs> I can show off some of the things I've got here. Oh, actually. Do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so sure. the, um, I've been, um, I have a little Ravelry group. I don't know if people know that. And um, and on Ravelry, um, I've had a little spate of people buying my sock yarn gradients. Oh, and, um, yeah, and then they're, they're really, um, they're small amounts. Um, I don't have it written on here. I think they're 15 grams or something or 20. They're like little mini gradients for making the Alaska bobble hats. Yeah. And um, 
surfing some wonderful, I've had three people show on Ravelry um, using the little gradients, um, um, making Alaska, the Alaska um, hat, which has been really fun. I really like that. So, <laughs> so I do gradients, uh, sock gradients, very small. And I yeah. also do um, gradients um, up to um, five ply um, in in silks. And this is the newest one um, <sighs> that I've got called uh, Spring Storm. It's showing quite green on the screen because of my lighting. Um, yeah. It's actually more of a, um, well, um, people are familiar with my yarns. We're called My Jade Bracelet, which is My yeah. Jade <laughs> it's yeah, actually, okay. actually yeah. that color to start it's a kind of a green chartreuse almost color kind of yeah. yellow chartreuse and um anyway so this is my newest one in uh three ply silk and um it's my ginseng silk from switzerland so um oh, so I dye them i dye gradients in uh, up to about five ply um, yeah which is sport weight a lot of lot of patterns coming out with sport weight now so i'm trying to build up my supplies of um sport weight yeah i'm five ply yeah uh, and at least Bailey has a question for you i'll just jump yeah. in sorry um how long have you been dying and how did you get into it okay well <laughs> i've been doing it for four years now and um, I really had to move somewhere where it was possible to do it with the space to do it because it takes up a lot of space. Um, I'm gradually taking over the house. This is my workroom. Um, and, um, and I also have a dye studio, which is an old workshop um, that was outside. Um, it's got like oil stains on the floor. So I think the previous guy probably um, was a, it's a bit mechanic. more mechanical. <laughs> yeah. and uh so i had to be careful not to drop anything because i don't want to get it dirty right um and um so it's a good place to die i have that as a as a dye studio out the back yeah um, i have a second bedroom which i use as my office um and my winding room and my shipping room and everything else that's involved um, yeah and the reason i got into it was um when i first came to australia um, I was trying to knit um, lace shawls um, with silks. Yeah. And um, I had a really hard time um, finding, um, I'm going to show you something in a minute, finding um, the types of yarns that I wanted to knit with, mm. um, mainly silk. And I tend to be a little bit of a purist. Um, I like pure fibres. I yeah. don't really, personally, I'm not really big into um, blends. I like wool to be wool and silk to be silk. Um, but that's a personal preference and I accept that. And I'm gradually becoming a little more tolerant of myself of using other fibres like this. It's got a bit of cashmere in it and I think it's even got a bit of nylon in it. But um, so... And um, anyway, so so I basically I couldn't find in Australia the yarns that I wanted. Yeah. Um, and uh, things have changed a little bit over the last four to five years, perhaps. But um, I that's how I I, I got into it. Uh, started off dying for myself, um, which is a great way to go. You learn <laughs> you learn all the problems. But you I do. Have to say, running a business um doing it is a totally different ball game um and there are days when you know you don't feel particularly like doing it especially at the moment we're we're within our in our second lockdown and i'm yeah. trying to guard against uh, going down the slippery slope which i can do um and uh keeping active and busy and doing the things i love to do is part of staying healthy i guess is how you would put it because um, you've got to keep your, your physical health and your mental health so sometimes definitely. keeping active works well for both of those yeah yeah it's um it, it's been a little bit of a challenge you know you don't think it's going to be you think i can do this it's not a big deal it's really not a lot of different to how i normally run my life i'm very busy and um but uh just not being able to do the social 
um, events um, yeah. make a difference. You know, Bendigo, I mean, this is the big ball show and we're online, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and Bendigo is a social event. Yeah, that's well. right. Um, it is. I think Bendigo, especially for us stool holders, Bendigo is as much social as it is for um, for selling, if that makes sense. This yeah. is when we get to talk to other people who know what it's like to stay at home and die yarn week after week. Oh, and yeah. some people things that people have made people come in wearing the sweaters of yarn that they bought the year before and, um they come to, with questions and asking how to do something or not that i'm any means an expert um but yeah i'm sure been given things to try yeah yeah there's um people always ask i have a, a usually have uh, my gradient shawls up and people always ask about how I put the beads on. So I'm always showing people, <laughs> it's one of my yeah. little pet things, how to put yeah. beads on. And, yeah. This one was a lace shawl that actually I didn't knit. A friend of mine knitted beautiful, um, this is my wild orchid colour. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Yes. Just beautiful um, shawl. Um, in wild orchid, in a really unusual uh, yarn, which is a, a tussa silk. Um, yeah. And uh, very unusual. I had to um, pull teeth to get the yarn. <laughs> and I have a limited. I, I hope that's figuratively. <laughs> yeah, figuratively. It's a kind of a shows you just how hard it was. Um, some of yeah. the. Um, suppliers I deal with, um, usually overseas, um, can be quite a challenge. Yeah, I can imagine there'd be times. There would yeah. be times. Um, you order something and you get something else and, you know, that kind of um, that Yes, kind. <laughs> that's, that's, isn't that the fun? Um, those of us, you know, we, we, we are like a, a final step. As dyers, we're the final step before it goes out into the wild to be made into something. Yeah. Yeah. And um, sometimes when you ask for a particular thing and a mill ships it to you and you're like, mm, that's not what I asked for. Can I send this back and please have what I asked for? <laughs> or different quantity to what you wanted. And, yeah. you know, one of the yeah. things I deal a lot with is um, from some places, they want massive um, minimum orders. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm trying to sell silk, and it's silk's a little of a tricky one in Australia. Um, people are very wool. You know, wool is a wonderful fibre. I love yeah. wool. Um, I use a I lot of silk up here in Queensland because you get to make all of the beautiful tops and shawls and things. And because it's humid and gross up here, silk doesn't do what wool does. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's really nice to have silk so that yeah, it doesn't yeah. do that. <laughs> and actually, I mean, I've, I've started to stock um, more cotton and linen yarns as well. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I can see where you are. You look like you're warm there. <laughs> um, well, I'm a little cold, but it's because I forgot oh, okay. to put the heater on and I only wore like a short sleeve. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's um it's cold. I've got the heater on it's right next to me here. Oh, I'd like to put the heater on. Yeah. I'm going to jump up in a um, second and just like press the button. <laughs> yeah, I think it's 13 is that going to be the height oh, of I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a look and then you're all going to laugh at me because I'm a big baby. Hang on a second. <laughs> oh, yes. I don't even want to tell you. <laughs> it's 20. Oh, 20. Okay. <laughs> but I'm in a cold tin shed, okay? I've been to like five degrees overnight and the shed hasn't warmed up yet, all right? That's my excuse. You accustomed to, to where you are, basically. That's, you become accustomed that's exactly right. to it and, and your body adjusts accordingly. So. And you buy your wardrobe accordingly also. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I do not like being cold, so... Yeah, yeah, it's not my favourite. Um, Catherine H has said, that shawl was so beautiful. I've just looked up your Alaska hat. Looks like I have another pattern purchase lined up. Very cute everyday oh. hat. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I have one of the top gradients left. <laughs> and oh, I just 
I just said on my little rabbit oh, group yesterday, which everyone's welcome to join. I would love to see more people there. Um, I, I, I said, I think I need to dye up more of these. So um, I will be dyeing up a few more. Um, the gradients are uh, um, a lot of work, if anyone hasn't guessed. It's not quite like dyeing a skein. You've got to knit the blank um, and uh, and dye them. And there's, I get a lot more um, mistakes. And if you're just a second, I'll just get one of my mistakes. I don't know if it's a good thing to show mistakes. Hold on one second. I show the mistakes. It's real life, isn't it? We're real life people making real life things and we are not perfect. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's a here's a sock yarn gradient um, in a in a it was called sunburnt out yep. of thing you think I know and you can see there there's one of the the um that's just my camera playing oh, up it'll be back yeah we can see some little splodges there yeah, little splodges and I I can't sell that easily online sometimes it sells in people go oh that's nothing you know and they don't yeah. mind but the reality is it's really not a big like that particular mistake is not a biggie it's not um, big when it's knitted um it sort of it'll be meant within the stitches so, that's right yeah. yeah um but you know i've got i think i've got six of these and i'll probably turn them into alaska hat um, yeah well, I was going to say, like you've just shown everybody here maybe you could pop them up on your website as photos of the blank and circle it and and yeah, be like look yeah. it's not a very biggie but if you want it it's it's you know um, it's twenty dollars and pay the money no <laughs> Yeah, I would like, you know, uh, I'll probably, if I make it into an Alaska hat, I'll just take out that middle bit and people will get half this way and half this way because it's a, it's a longer one than an Alaska hat. Anyway, yeah. I have about six of these because I did a whole big thing of them and I made a mistake on a lot of them. Um, so yeah. just par for the course, it's what, what happens sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, any more questions? No, I think I think we are good. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, we have someone who's just dropping in a lot of things, but I have a feeling that they are coming from external to our group and I can't moderate from here. So my pattern, my first knitwear pattern, um, which I did for Indie Road magazine. Yeah. And it's a cow. And um, I did my first pattern. I was really chuffed with it. And you can get the pattern through Indie Road. And I'm also yeah. offering, um, because I wasn't able to get them up on the website in time for the Big Wall Show, but I'm also offering kits to go with the, the, uh, the cow. So yeah. um, you can get the yarn and the, the a smaller skein of the silver. Um, oh, so it matches the amounts yeah. better? So it matches, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic. You, you know, if you buy a whole skein, if you did this, you'd end up with a lot left over. So I, I do a smaller skein so you don't have to waste so much. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. everybody, if you want, to jump in and check out Sadie's Yarns at Green Tea Yarns, make sure you get over to the Big Wool Show, follow the links. And as Sadie was saying earlier, you've got um, some yarns that are still in stock and some that will be dyed to order, but you can still get them. So don't panic. You haven't missed out. And if you need to decide between two things, always go with the mini sets as some of those colours are not repeatable whereas the sets, gener the skeins generally are repeatable. Is that all right, Sadie? Yeah, generally, that sounds, that sounds exactly right. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, it's been lovely chatting and we will chat to you again, I'm sure. Um, yeah, yeah, I've I got, it, was, it was a lot of fun. June is, June from uh, Fortune Yarn Company is ready. She got a little thumb up going, like, yay, she's dancing. She's very happy. It's going to make me look very, very slovenly and slow. She's so excited. Yes. <laughs> right. It's been Thanks wonderful. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank and we'll chat again. Great, great wall show. It's really been fantastic. So bye. 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 <laughs>
Okay, we're going to get June up in just right this second. She's wiggling and moving. It's great. Here we go. Hi, June. Hi, How are you doing? I'm very excited. Just so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm so glad you could make it to our live sessions. June, I know, you I know. have yeah. got Fortune Yarn Company. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and your business for those of us that don't know anything and while you do that yeah. I am going to stand up but I'm just putting the heater on and I'll okay. come straight back okay okay all right I sure. am a baby and I am cold okay <laughs> that's fine all right um I started uh Fortune Yarn Co at the end of last year yeah um and usually what I do is um I knit and then I test knit a lot of patterns and um I started to dye yarn because I want to play with my own kind of colors as well because sometimes you can't get your own colors, if you know what I mean. And yeah, I've, yes. I've tested it out ever since. And now I'm just trying to do it as a full time job. Yeah. I wonder and if. Yeah. Are you enjoying it as a full time job? Sorry. I'll put um, the on. I, that's okay. That's good. At least you're warm now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I still, uh, well, I. My main job is I run a restaurant. I have my own restaurant as well. And, oh, wow. Um, yeah, transitioning to hospitality, to dyeing yarn is like a totally different business. But um, I'm enjoying it. And it's hard. It's such a hard job to do to, yeah. you know, um, like uh, Sadie said before that, you know, you have to test your yarn. Um, you make lots of mistakes. But in the end, it's like, it's fun. You'll get to put colors in a pan and hopefully it turns out great. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's the opposite <laughs> hopefully, right yeah. word right there, it, isn't it? I know I never get it right the first time. So I have a lot of yarn just sitting around and you know, maybe it's I different. should knit with it or maybe what I should just... do with this. <laughs> yeah. Mini packs. Mini packs. Yeah. That's what... I actually keep a crate yeah. of color tests and um you know when, like, I I buy my my yarn on cones, so sometimes I, there's not enough in, like, is the last bit's not 100 grams or, yeah. you know. I, um, same, and so same I stain me, them all up and then I yeah. dye them anyway and then they go into this crate and then once a year I do off all these mini packs of crazy colour packs and oh, and then people still get idea. to play with all the colours and I'm just kicking yeah. myself I didn't have enough ready for this show because um, I did oh. a big a big batch just sort of in um, at the, oh, when was it, sort of earlier this year, like January or something, and it was just a bit, chaotic and now it's like I don't have enough colors to play with oh but no it's, it's so much fun to do and I it highly is, recommend it, it. Is. sorry yeah, guys I mean, totally, I mean totally every, that one. everyone could I I'd recommend I from my personal view I recommend yarn dyeing it's very therapeutic if you think about it that way you pop your music on you know and you you probably see like some colors on you know, like movies or paintings or something, and you want to transfer that into a skein. And sometimes it works. It works out so well. And then you get this beautiful thing that you can knit with. And, yeah, absolutely amazing. And every time yeah. you wear what you have dyed, you remember what inspired you. Yes, yes. This is not um, my own hand-dyed yarn, but this is my, one of my test knits. So... <laughs> Yeah. I wish I could dye something up like this. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So it's, how's um yeah. How's sorry, Queensland? Are you in Queensland? I'm in Queensland, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, okay. where are you based? I'm based in Adelaide. Yes. Adelaide. Oh my gosh, Adelaide. I've seen a few little like like a few people coming in from Adelaide. Um, yeah, yeah. no, we're doing okay up here. It's it's cold for Queensland. Um I, I do put for Queensland. Um, More Queensland, yeah. <laughs> what's happening is because it's beautiful, clear skies, there's no cloud cover. So we're getting like these gorgeous 20 yeah. degree temperatures through the day. Oh. But then at night, the temperature just, just plummets. And yeah. I was talking to someone about it. Our houses are not built to keep the heat in. <laughs> Our houses are built to get the heat out as fast as possible. <laughs> so keeping warm at night, it's like huddling under blankets. <laughs> Oh, I, I, yeah, I love my blankets. I just, I can't be cold. Sometimes yeah. I can say I don't like the cold, but I do because I get to wear like, you know, hand-knit items 
and my kids love it as well. Like, oh, mommy, when are you going to knit me a hat, knit me a sweater? They grow yeah. out of that. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah they, yeah. they grow out like, pretty quickly. We, we, yeah. were at, we were at a shop and she wants to see, um, like, she's looking at a thing. She'd be like, oh, mom, can I totally buy this? It's like, I'm like, <laughs> make you that, like, easily. And she's yeah. like, oh, no, I want this one. And you're just like, <laughs> fine. I don't want to knit it for you anyway. <laughs> 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 yeah, I try to. I just knit them accessories because I used to do like, um, because my son is four and I have a two and a half year old daughter, they grow out so quickly. So now I just do accessories like you know the hats or you know scarf here and there. Yeah, yeah. They do. Like, they do request them. Like two yeah. and three sizes a gear. Oh, they, yeah. Oh. Now, I know um, what you mean. Yeah. Got some questions and some comments that are jumping sure. in here for you. So Belle Shepherd and her saying hi June. Amanda is saying, hi, June, nice to meet you. I'm wondering nice where you. you get your yarn bases from. Okay. Hi, Amanda. Well, I get my bases um, from different places, sometimes from the UK, um, sometimes from America. It's it's a hit and miss. So yeah. I, I basically get them, dye them, knit them, and see how I like them. So that's the only way to kind of test my base yeah, as well absolutely um, and yeah i think every dryer is in the same boat and everyone's going to like different things as well so it really comes down to you as an individual testing it and trying yes. it yes and deciding do i want to go back for more yeah <laughs> we're knitters pretty much we if you don't like a base why would you want to work with that base because it's a personal preference i mean yeah. um yeah, some people yeah. like it, like, you know, Sadie liked, um, like, you know, the raw kind of wool or just silk or silk. Yeah, yeah, that's right, she doesn't like yeah. a blend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. It, it depends on personal, like, preference, yeah. 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 Um, Anna Tran has said, hi, June, nice to meet you. That jumper you are wearing is beautiful. Did you knit that yourself? The colours are stunning. Oh, thanks, oh. Anna. Yes, I knit this um, myself. It's um, a test knit. Like I said, I used, well, I still do test knitting as well. Um yeah, made this just finished and the pattern will be released, I think, on the 19th. Not my pattern, but um, watch out for it. Yeah, it will come Keep out. Keep your eyes peeled, yep. Anna. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, <laughs> and Beck Humphreys is also saying, I love your jumper, June. It's gorgeous. Thank you, Beck. Thank you. I love it too. It's one of my favourite. Um, it looks I toasty. It, it is. I'm, I'm getting pretty hot, actually, because i got my heater on as <laughs> So if you see my face going a bit red, that means like it's just uh, hot in here. I try to put some extra lighting to blow the red redness out of my face. Yeah, <laughs> June, you, like like we were saying before, you are running Fortune Young Co. Um, yeah. It's it's a passion project for you. It Do is, you yes. have um, particular colors that you are just in love with and can't not die? I always use blue or pink it's these two colors i cannot like i i try i try to stay away from it and kind of venture off into you know yellows and orange and things like that as well which i try to but i always come back to blue um or pink so if you see yeah. even with test knitting as well um i if you see on my instagram page if you kind yeah. of scroll down you can see a palette that i like <laughs> Yeah. So there's, I think blue is like way up there. Yeah. Blue okay. Is, yeah. I cannot stay I, away. I think everybody has yeah. a color that they tend to just lean into. They're just yeah. like, they don't even, like, I don't even know if I'm doing it, but it's like, oh, look, I've done a green again. Yeah. It's I don't knit with green. You don't, you don't I don't know why it. I dye green. I don't knit with it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just dyeing more greens. Like, oh, I'm going to try and make a new color. Oh, it came out as a green. <laughs> yeah. Right. Even even my mom, she um she test uh well she kind of helped me check out the colours sometimes and she goes, Do you realize you just dye like lots of blue and greens and you don't do other she's ones like, there at are all? More colors. There are more colours. <laughs> yeah, she's like, there's you know, orange and yellows and pinks and whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. so it's, funny. It's tricky because sometimes you're subconscious 
can take a hold of you while you're at the dye pots, especially yeah. like when, you know, you've got your music on and you're just sort of in the flow and yeah, you're in that creative mode of making a new colour. You're not in a batch mode where you're repeating a colour. Yeah. And you're just like la, 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 la. And then you look in the pots and you're just like. <laughs> Everything is. It's the same colour. <laughs> Uh, I I did that as well. Um, I actually write down like usually the steps of colors I want to explore, yes. and then I don't know. My hand just keeps grabbing the blue and put it in, and it's just like, don't stop doing that. Oh, it's just so funny. Have you considered taking the blue away one I day, did. like I literally did. putting it in a bucket and moving it somewhere else, so that when you're dying, <laughs> blue is not an option. <laughs> I actually did like, that. Who in the naughty corner? Oh, I, I actually did that. All the navies and everything is aside. And then, like, I start to pick up some colours that actually turn things blue. If <laughs> I yeah, cannot stay you away. You without blue dye. You are a legend. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine H says that this is good for me because blue is my favorite color. Oh, thank you, Catherine. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorites as well. I cannot stay away. Like, see, I'm wearing blue now. <laughs> yeah, blue is a great color. It's a really good calming color too. So is, you think you run a restaurant as well as you, yes, I do. Yeah, this business as well, like the Young Co. As yeah. well as you've got two small kids. Yes, I do. You and sleep I, ever? I, I don't. I can't sleep you know last night I <laughs> told myself I was like I need to sleep early because I need to wake up I have to look alive for the live show and yeah um I I try to put my schedule like intact but sometimes life happens and yes. I can't get things done yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no Too I, many I get things it. to do yes sick or something happens and it's just like well that's not happening today now yeah um so I try not to stress so much. <laughs> yeah. And, and and like a lot of things with, with us creative types, sometimes we do just need to try and go with the flow a little. Like yes. we need every human person like like biologically requires boundaries. Yes. But those boundaries can be quite broad. <laughs> so, I I try not like, to I try not to do the boundaries because like um you know when I because being when you're knitting and when you're test knitting, you need to set your time frames. And sometimes, yeah. like, um, even, you know, my husband, he said to me, why are you stressing from knitting? You should be, like, you know, really calm, like, you know, really relaxed. And then I'm like, I need to meet the deadline. I need to meet the deadline. So I have know, to knit faster. Yeah, I have to knit faster. My hand can't go any faster than this. So. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you really enjoy, like, because, you know, you obviously do a bit of test knitting. Like, how did you get into that? And do you really enjoy it? Um, I do. Uh, I did. Well, I guess, like, I wanted to um, explore in terms of, working with deadlines because I, I like deadlines <laughs> um so I like doing that and I like to challenge myself because um if you for example if you buy a pattern uh it's already been tested for you so majority of the time it's it's already perfect and whereas test knitting you get to know the I, I guess like the structure behind of um how a pattern works uh each designers think differently so I like that kind of challenge, I think, yeah. um, in terms of test knitting. Yeah, and I do quite a bit. And I first time test knitting was a hat. Yeah. Um, and and I think I start applying for um, sweaters and jumpers. And then now it's just I pretty much know exactly, like, how things are supposed to go. And, yeah, it's, it's a learning curve, but I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Caitlin Jones has a question for you. Uh, yeah. She says, I've just started experimenting with dyeing and most of my information comes from YouTube. Where did you learn to dye? Um, I learned it the hard way. I got yarn and I just did it. But um, I did uh, watch a bit of, um, I think she's on YouTube, uh, Chemnitz. Yeah. And she has great information because um, uh, she kind of experiments with different types of yarn and how she does it and you know she she basically tests it out for us so we do yeah. have to you know spend all the money and the time to do it so yeah. pretty much that's where i learned from um 
like I said, like trials and error as well, that really helped because everyone dies differently. Um, yeah. Everyone I think mixes. the big thing for dies is you have to be willing to make the mistake. Yes. Yeah. And and don't don't take it as mistake. Take as as um like this is I could do better than this or I won't do yeah. that again. Yeah. And yeah. Then, and then like I said, um it, it comes with uh time as well. Cause when I started, I put every single color in with, you know, I don't even mix it. And yeah. then you learn to kind of take back a little bit and um you know, put it like the color here, like gently do it here. Like don't do it that way. And yeah, it it's a like, you just have to do it, you know, get in there yeah. and do it. Yeah. And yep. Yeah, check out Chemnitz. <laughs> That's where I got <laughs> it from. Also, um, a really great class. I don't know. I know that Craftsy have just been sold again and I know that they're continuing to they're, run. They're coming There's back. I think really yep. fantastic classes available on Craftsy. Yeah. Um, there's oh, a lady Skillshare as well. Skillshare, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Skillshare might have it, but I haven't checked right. them out yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Skillshare. All right. Skillshare, um, yeah. So you are obviously a part of the Big Bull Show and you yes. have your stall. Um, how, I, I haven't seen you at Bendigo before because you no, haven't done a Bendigo no. yet. Um, um, I... What made you decide to jump in? Like, uh, be like, Sai, hey, I'm from fun. Happy Hank. She, oh, yeah. I started talking to Sai and um, she said, oh, you should really join, like get in there. And I'm just like, oh, but I'm not, I don't think I'm ready. She goes, no, you can do this. She goes, I'm going to send you a link and <laughs> you just get on it and you can do this. And she was so Good. supportive. Thank you, Sai. She's so Sai supportive. She yeah. is. She's so supportive. Um, she gave me lots of tips um, of how to do things. And uh, maybe next year I might, you know, if we can, I might go and, you know, have a little store or something. Yeah. That would so be thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Big thanks to Sai. Yeah. Big thanks to Sai. And, you know, it just, what do you call it? Um, it makes me like realize that how much prep and you know time and effort that you need just to have you know a store and this is online you know and, and it's right. great online but I I would love to just go next year and get to meet everyone yeah and it's talk to everyone fun. give everyone a, a hug or something yeah I, remember <laughs> that. I think social distancing will still be no, okay. just, elbow like, yeah elbow elbow, elbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss hugging people. Like I just like when I, I see my friends, I'm like, oh. and I'm not a big hugger, but there's people that I do hug that I'm like, oh, no, yeah. Hi. yeah, same. I'm just like air hug. I'm gonna air hug you guys. Like, oh, uh. yeah, can't wait, can't wait. If we could go, it would be amazing. It um, will be a I'll lot of to... fun. There's some, yeah. there's there's a tip. Um, tablecloths are great. Okay, <laughs> like. Make sure you okay. get a nice tablecloth that okay. um that ha like that's not busy that's not like p okay. fully patterned um so that so that it enhances your yarn yeah, and also yeah. means thank you, you. Under the tables <laughs> okay yeah that's a good idea so we can hide like lots of stuff under there yeah, yeah, no one no one would know how know, messy like, we are the table space. <laughs> and so being able to hide stock under the table is good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and having a friend is amazing because one of the th big things I've been hearing um, over the last sort of yesterday and last night was as stall holders, sometimes we find it difficult to escape to do things like just, you know, the, the, the lineup for the bathrooms would take oh. you half an hour waiting in the line just to go. So, oh, no. um, you know, having someone who can be at your store for you is one of those yeah. things. That, you know so that that would be my two tips to to doing Thank a you. show is all the way to the ground yeah. um and also having a friend who you can trust um so yeah it, that it's would just be perfect. amazing um <laughs> and and take more stock than you think you'd need yes um i mean the when i spoke to sai she said she had so many and it just doesn't seem like it's enough so yeah. um 
I thought of myself of that kind of number that I have to die up. I'm just like, <gasps> do you think I, I think I don't think I could do it. She goes, no, you can do it. You have a whole year to prepare. And I'm just like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> yeah, like every time you do a batch, pull some of it and put it away. I say yeah. that and then I don't. And then I madly die a month before Bendigo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know that feeling actually. Like I, I know that feeling. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm dying like, at the moment. Like there was yarn in pots right now. <laughs> oh no, mine doesn't dry very well. Like because Adelaide's cold at the moment, and yeah. every time I get the sun, I, I actually had to buy like the you know the spin dryer just to get things. The best thing, like, the best we, thing I ever purchased. Up here, but we've got humidity as well, so yeah. the spin dryer oh. was like the best thing. Best thing I ever purchased. Oh, here we go. Someone has, has, has commented. Jennifer has said, display. I agree with you. Tip. Also display light colours and clearly label items with their prices. That's great. That's actually yeah. a great tip. As, um, as most people don't like having to ask the price. That's true. And it could be busy as well. Um, that's exactly right. I, so I've never been to a yarn show before, but I expect like everyone just – trying to get their things and then yeah that's that's a really good tip thank you yeah. Jennifer yeah and um I have another tip for you if you if you just have an item that's on display um mm -hmm. like say, say you've got your jumper or your shawl um and you've got like kits make sure you make twice as many kits in the exact colorways of what's displayed ah, for some yeah. reason I always sell yeah. more of that so I'm okay. just saying like all these crazy tips at you, sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't be. I, I actually like this because like sometimes if I if I like a jumper and yeah. it's knit out as a really nice sample, I want exact colour. Like yeah, yeah. that's and me. And so does most yeah. people. Like that's the thing. They look at it and that's what attracted them. Like they're like, oh, I like you. <laughs> and and then, then you're told, oh, well, you can have it in this other colour way. And you're like, but I don't like that one. No, I want that one. Yeah, that's me. That's me. As yeah, well. that's like, totally me. That's totally me. Um, <laughs> so, do you have like, if you have a think about what's currently on your store right now? Yeah. yeah. What would be the one thing that you would think everyone needs to touch and buy and take home for themselves so that they can trial it because you love it so much? Oh, I, I, I actually sold out of this one, but. This is my um oh, those colors. It's so happy. And I have it knit up. Sorry, just like a sock. So it would be like oh. such a sorry, it's not finished yet. <laughs> That's right. None of my projects but, are finished. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's such a fun color. And you know what? Is, is that one you can repeat? Yes, this yeah. is a repeatable so, colorway. So if someone would like one. Um, yeah, fa not Facebook, sorry, Instagram me or Etsy shop yeah. message, I could do this up for you. Um, yeah. But it's because I like wearing um, bright coloured socks Yeah, with, with my boots because my boots are always black or brown or really boring colours and I try yeah. to have as bright socks as I can. Yeah. So this that was a perfect colour for me. Yeah. <laughs> that is gorgeous. I love it. Barbara Newbin has added, labels need to be simple too, not not too busy and um, with good contrast in the printing. So we've got, we're getting yeah. great tips from the audience as well for our, for yeah, our labels. Thank you. Displays. Yeah, I, at um, the moment um, I write, handwrite them, but I try to handwrite as nice as I can. Um, yeah. But, yeah, that's getting there yeah. as well. So new label My printer. <laughs> I have atrocious handwriting and every now and again I have to write a colour name in with hand and I just think, well, that's just devalued it, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, like I, try, like I try to tell myself, like, if, if, like, you know, if my husband can't read it, that means no one can read it. So <laughs> I, need, I need to, like, yep, take time and write and be alone, not with the kids, yeah, and yep. get that down. <laughs> oh, my yeah. gosh. So what was that colourway called? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, it's called Stardust. I'm sorry, guys. Forgot to right. tell you that. Stardust. Yeah, that Stardust. Beautiful. So it's very. And it is. It's so bright, but it's also, it's not garish. It's just bright. It's bright. And it's got these, um, I think, like, you know, uh, neon yellow, uh, the orange, and like a raspberry type of speckles. Yeah. And when you knit a sock, it's stripes. I love striped socks. It's just so fun to knit as like a vanilla sock. So yep. you don't have to think about it, but then. 
yeah. when you look at the colors, it just, it's so nice. That's just me. <laughs> it is one yeah. of those things. Um, we've got more tips. Um, you uh, And put catchy items at eye level and put a desk for payments at the back of the shop. Also reduce any clutter. That's not always possible. Like I would okay. love to do those things, but um, for payments, especially at Bendigo, you've normally yeah. just got people coming at you and you don't have space to have a separate spot for your payments. Oh. Um, and reducing clutter. I mean, my stall is total clutterville. It's one problem. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> um, Seeking Wellness says that that's a gorgeous colour that you've got there. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And then Jennifer also says that she loves your jumper. Everyone loves thank your jumper. You. It's a gorgeous jumper. Um, so, you. Jean, you, you've still got yarn available in your store. Is uh, yes, yes. Um, You guys have, I was blown away yesterday of how much support and love I've got from everybody. I was, I sat down, I almost cried. I was like, oh my God. Um, I don't have much left in the shop, but um, if you need something, you can always yeah. ask can me. Can you put anything. any of your items on like a pre order list or a back order list so that people can um, order? Not it? at the moment, because to be yep. honest, um, time is really crucial for me. Yes. And also, uh, my yarn hasn't arrived yet. It's still stuck somewhere in Dubai. Yes, I have a box of yarn, a massive box of yarn that I am waiting on that has not appeared um, no. for, for my monthly yarn club and it was due oh, to ship no. out, died in two days and it oh, hasn't, no. hasn't left the UK yet. It's still yes. sitting, as, that was the last scanning was in the UK. So I totally, yeah. Yeah. I totally get it, yeah. Um, well. So if you guys watching want any of June's beautiful yarns, you need to go in and get in now because we don't know when you're going to get them back again. So you need to yes. clear out the shop so she has no yarn oh, left to make it easy. I'm going to cry so, again, guys. <laughs> going to our cry. goal, everybody, is to make June cry, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we like you need to get in there and buy all of her colorways and so that she's got nice clear shelves to, to, she's going to have to work her very busy butt off with another business and a yarn business and two <laughs> little kids to restock everything <laughs> oh amazing you guys amazing i'm so blown away <laughs> oh my god jane it's been so lovely to meet you and to talk thank to you, you Chantel. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here and I'm glad I'm here. Yeah, yeah I'm thank glad you so that much. I talked you into it. Yeah, I know. I, I, I wasn't actually planning to do this. I was like, mm, should I, should I not? I was like, you know what, let's just do it. Let's just chat. Like, I'm doing a yarn show for the first time. I'm doing all the things. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you so do much it. for having me. Thank you so much for being part of the Big Bull Show, June. And Thank I you. hope Hopefully that I'll see you next it year. You. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Hopefully we'll see I'll each other next year. Show. Yes, I'm <laughs> going there. <laughs> see you there. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, hang on. Sorry, Claire. I went to... <laughs> <laughs> and she removed herself and it just slides you straight across. I was going to That's introduce right. you. Everybody, this is Claire from the Fiber Art Shed that was formerly online, which I did not know that the other week uh, <laughs> when I was talking to Claire. Claire, how are you going? Yeah, really good. We've um, had a really good day yesterday. Everybody was so um, excited about the products we had on offer. And, um, yeah, it's all been great. Now, I need to know. Are there any five babies left? I think there's still at least one left. Yep. All right. Yep, there's I've got to. I've got to. I've got to get in there. Yeah. Is it, is it a dirty cream fiber baby? I think there's still <laughs> some dirty cream fiber babies left. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just writing it down. Dirty yep. cream. <laughs> just sorry, guys. I'm just dealing with my shopping list right now. You need to wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. When Claire did her interview um, earlier before the show started, she was cuddling these amazing fibre babies. Um, have you, do you have one handy to show everybody? I don't, I don't think I do. No, that's um, okay. That's all right. Yeah, um, sorry. 
And it's this big, giant, like it is like cuddling a baby, 200 yeah. gram, um, like natural rovings. And it was just so beautiful. And I love that it was called Fiber Babies. Yeah. So you need to go and watch that interview so you can see what the Fiber Babies yeah, That's right. Like. That's right. Go and watch the interview, but not right now because not my right mom is right now. <laughs> After after Claire finishes, or after two o'clock when we're all done and you That's can't it. decide what else to watch, go and watch the interview that's sitting on the speaker page, and you'll hear. Yeah. You'll get to see the fiber babies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, so you had a big day yesterday. Yeah, we did. It was really great. It was almost like the first day of the Bendigo show. It was that sort of oh, really? excitement, oh, and yeah, it really was. Oh, that's so amazing. Mm. It's so good to hear that, that so many people have just jumped in and supported this event um, yeah. and supported, like, like I mean, you guys are one of the sponsors for the event. So, mm. like, supporting you guys and supporting the Australian wool and fibre industry, yeah. even though we don't get to be in Bendigo, like, like checking out the sheep in the shed and walking around and doing all the stuff. It's been wonderful just having, like, yourself, uh, like, get involved and yeah. just with so much amazing stuff, did you have something that you've got that people are not, like that you would expect people to sort of be a bit more like excited about and they're just not, they, and maybe they just don't get it? Um, well, we have a new advent calendar this year and it's new for us and it's new for the site. And so the whole thing is new. Um, yeah. And so, oh, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about that because it's, Let's even though it features on that. our front page, it's a new thing for us and it is a bit of yeah. a higher price point, but I just thought we'd talk through what's involved so people yes, know what they're getting. Absolutely. I want to know and what's in your advent calendar. I thought we'd sort of unbox it and maybe show you the <gasps> first day just to get you a little bit of a teaser. Oh, yes. And as a special added bonus, I have my lovely assistant, Paul, here to help me. Oh, hello, Paul. He, he doesn't have any <laughs> headphones on, just leave. Hi. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, this is the advent calendar here. Oh, wow. What I'm going to do yeah. is I'm going to give you all the screen, okay? Oh, so the I'm whole screen. Okay. The whole screen. So we'll still be able to talk to each other, um, okay. but you need more room. We need to see what's okay. going on. Okay. All right. There you go. All right. So I'm going to have Paul hold it so it's easier. So you yeah. have this whole box Actually, of fiber. You get to, is it possible to turn your phone the other way? Oh, hang on. Yes, maybe. Woo! Give it. There we did go. That, no? yes. Did that work? Yeah. Yes, oh, it okay, worked. Hang on. Now let me just get resettled because it doesn't fall over. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. That's okay. So right. now um, we the box. Yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop the box okay so this is the yeah. box it's going to come with very basic minimal packaging we're trying really hard to have a lot of compostable and recyclable reusable um, packaging so you're going to get a box that's going to be wrapped in compostable wrapping um with with no plastic involved yeah, you get awesome. um yeah so uh for the first 24 days of december there'll be a 25 grams to open each day on the 25th day on christmas morning There'll be a special uh, blend that's exclusive to the advent calendar of 100 grams of fiber that will blend here oh. in the fi fi uh, fiber art shed. Um, so there'll be a few extra small gifts. Uh, and the fibers include luxury fibers, local traceable fibers, plant-based fibers, some rare breeds, and some fun embellishments. And most of them will be all in the natural colors. The embellishments may be bright colors. Um, oh, this sounds exciting. I know. So it's $170. It includes free shipping um, yeah. and it will ship mid-November. And oh, wow. the other thing I wanted to say is like we have plenty, plenty available. So don't feel like you're going to miss out. Um, yep. Yeah. So we'll just unwrap it now. <laughs> <laughs> like, let me in there. Let me in and there. That's, that's, that's a really good price point, like for that much fiber. Yeah. Well, we wanted to make it affordable. <laughs> So that's, that's the 24 days. The 25th day is going to have to sit outside the box because like you can see it's chock full. There's no room for 100 grams of fiber. So we're going to have it wrapped up in special paper on the outside of the box. Um, but I thought I would just show you um, day number one. Oh, my mm. gosh. Everyone, are we all ready to see day number one? Are you guys day excited with me? Like, I'm like, bring me the spoilers. I want those spoilers. Okay, so um, it's a paper... Uh, hang on, I gotta figure out my camera is. There mm -hmm. it is. It's paper packaging, so you can yep. recycle the bag or reuse the bag. Yep. Um, just tape shut. Inside each one will be 25 grams of fiber and a little bit of information about that fiber. Ah. On day one, we're gonna have dark brown yak fiber. Oh my gosh. Super soft. Oh, wow. I wish we had squish-a-vision. We need squish-a-vision. I know, I want squish-a-vision. 
So you can sort of see it there. It's a oh, luxury wow. fiber. Yeah. Um, it normally goes for uh, $20 for 100 grams, and having it part of yep. the, the parcel um, is a good deal. So you get 25 and grams of that. And this little of yak is going to go a really long way. Yeah. And you get an information sheet as well, so you know what it is. So it says it's dark yep. brown yak. Um, it tells you a little bit about it, that it's very fine, that it's short. So you can spin yep. it straight. You can blend, mm -hmm. blend it with something else. Um, it's also okay yep. for felters. Um, yeah. You could use it as a felting embellishment. So these advent calendars have no yarn in them. Now I'm a yeah. knitter, so that's a hard yeah. thing for me. Um, yes. But we thought we'd start they with are the fiber. Lot of spinners who come along to these events, and you know, like I'm like, I want an advent calendar. Yeah. An advent calendar with yeah. my squishy baby. Yeah. I'm yeah. added so, to the list. Yep, advent calendar. So they're, we're, ha we're leaving them open for order until the 15th of September. Mm -hmm. um, so you have time to order. You have time to save up. I know some people, for some people, that might be a bit of a high price point. Save up a little bit every week, and you'll be there in no time. It's free shipping. Yep. So once you've got the 170, you're set. Um, yep. And it's the first time we've done it, so we're really excited about it. Yeah. There'll be some of our local traceable fiber in there as well. Um, oh, yeah. fantastic. So yeah. for those of you that don't know, um, the, 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 the fiber babies are made out of fiber art shed traceable uh, fibers, which means that it's a totally traceable, you know, which farm it's come from. Yep. And a lot of it is really local to us here on the Central Coast as well. So yeah. some of it's from the Central Coast, some of it's from a bit further away, say Goulburn um, or the Blue Mountains. But yeah, so yeah. we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, that ah, oh, I'm fully excited about it. I can't wait. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm glad to finish here today, Danielle. I need to go shopping. She needs to go shopping. <laughs> Let her free. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I definitely need to do some shopping. Mm. Um, I've been really good. Good. Uh, so yeah, yeah um, you've been busy. You know, I've, I've been, well, I've, I'm also trying to be good as well at the same time. Leanne's yeah. craft room has said, hey, Santa, are you listening? Oh, so this is the other thing. You could secretly send, not secretly, subtly send the link for the fiber arts calendar, uh, um, yep. advent calendar to, you know, someone who might want to buy you a someone Christmas Someone who present. may need to purchase that for you for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so if they leave me like, a little note, you know, I will wrap it up nice and put from Santa. Oh, whatever. you can make it so it's ready for the Christmas tree. Well, early, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It'll come. Yeah. But yeah. We oh, can. that is awesome too. That's mm. super special. Um, mm. We've got a message here from Yarns by the Bay. You've had terrible storms on the Central Coast. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Thanks for asking. We actually live on the very edge of the, of the beachy area. We're not, we're about 20 minutes from the beach. We're almost in the hinterland. So yeah. we've had wind, but that's it. But yeah, it's been pretty awful, pretty devastating. Um, it's been a crazy few months for everybody um but yeah this most recent round of storms has hit the local area pretty hard um but yeah we're yeah. fine thank you for asking oh that's good that's good mm. does anybody in the chat here there is we have 97 people watching live right oh now. my goodness 97 oh. people and i actually think some of it might be my family from america so hi family that's in america well, like this close is family you need to jump in and say hi in um, lieu of a zoom call today <laughs> we'll do chatting live with chantel <laughs> <laughs> that's i mean why not like Why you still not? get to talk to them, and, yeah. and but I mean, you probably talk more about fluff today than you would do with your family, I would think. Yeah. I mean, I'm well, making assumptions. No, I talk about fiber all the time, <laughs> all the time. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, and actually, there's a bit of a family connection with what I'm wearing. So the sweater, I don't know if you can okay, see, yes, is a basic raglan sweater. But my grandmother yeah. knit that for my mom when my mom was in her 20s and now I'm wearing it because I love it and oh then yeah it's just a basic raglan but it's it's classy it's it's classic it's, it's a classic mm. and then the scarf is hand spun yeah. yarn my hand spun and my son's hand spun he's now eight and a half and he yeah. wove it for me on one of our little looms so. oh my gosh that is so cute yeah. now Claire mm. speaking of things that small people can do and the fact that we are, you know, not doing our usual things. I, mm. I remember from our chat that you had violent craft sales go up. <laughs> um, yeah. 
you want to know what I'm talking about, you guys need to go and watch our interview from earlier. It's over on the website. I think um, I've coined a new term called violent craft. It's, it's violent craft. I mean, I told my Zoom chat about it and they are like running with it. Like it's everyone's like, what, what violent craft can we do today? Um, <laughs> Oh, dear. Um, here we go. Cahoon has said, I've already made one unplanned purchase today. I feel like that fibre advent calendar will be the next. Yep. So that will be cool. You and me both, yep. Cahoon. You, you yep, and me yep. both. Excellent. Um, so what I was going to ask is how is your, like, stabby punch things going? Yeah, so so the um, rug punch tools that we talked about in the previous yep. chat. Um, yeah. We don't have a lot of stock in at the moment because they come from America. And like I heard yeah. your pre like June talking about and you talking about things are getting stuck in transit, yeah. especially out of the States. Um, so yeah. we can take pre-orders for those rug making tools. We're one of the few yeah. stockists in Australia for those. Um, if yeah. you'd like to order one of those, just send me a message. I'll get you on yeah. the pre-order list. Um, it takes about two or three weeks for them to fill the order in America and about three or four so they're weeks. They're all handmade to tools as well. Get here. They're handmade tools um, yeah. made and yeah, assembled by hand. Um, and they're lovely tools. So, um, but in the meanwhile, if you need to take your frustrations out in other ways. Yes, please. Um, yes, you could try needle felting, which is great for yep. kids. Um, in fact, I might have my lovely assistant just pop over on the shelf and grab me those two boxes. Um, this is great having an assistant. I know, it's fantastic. <laughs> I have one on Dice Stream Days and I'm just like, woohoo! Woohoo, <laughs> this is great. Um, so we, because we're an Astra dealer, um, we stock some Ashford felting kits, and these are um, really cute and affordable. They're fifteen dollars. We've got a kiwi. Oh wow! Yeah. And we've got a penguin. Oh, he's so cute. So they're fifteen dollars, and what's great about those is they come with everything you need to make that little creature. And so all the fiber and the felting kit, and and one yeah. of the soft things to punch into. Yeah. So it cut these kits come with the foam to punch into, which is great, so you don't damage your table or your fingers. Yep. Um, the, it comes with all the wool you need and comes with the needle and the instructions. And yep. there, I've had people, um, who are new to felting buy these kits, make it over the weekend and send me a photo on Monday saying, look what I made. They're that easy wow. to use. They're great for yep. kids. Um, so, and they're great for lockdown because you can take yep. out your frustrations. Because needle wool. felting is classed under the new classification of violent craft. Yes. Violent craft. Needle <laughs> felting is violent craft. So I've got these kits that come with everything you need, including the foam. I've got some smaller kits that you can make um, flowers, roosters, sheep, uh, bugs. They don't come with the foam, but they come with everything else. So the wool. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So those are fun. Yeah. And they're violent craft. Violent craft. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you were prepared for my violent craft. Um, that's okay. You know. Questioning. I had I had a few no no I had a couple of people message me on Instagram who are customers of mine and they said we watched your video and that thing about violent craft is the best thing I'd ever heard I didn't really realize it was going to be a bit of a thing I think it's a thing I think it's a thing now and we're just going to roll with it I, I should have changed the name of the business instead of fiber arch we should have been violent craft. violent arches <laughs> no maybe not oh, no. Um, you guys don't only do violent arts no no in fact we do lots of of calming things too um, yes you have lots of beautiful fibers for spinning yeah and, and knitting as well um yeah. so one of the reasons we changed our name from felt fine to fiber art shed was to show that we are more than just felting tools and yeah. felting wool um so we have we suck a variety of natural yarn bases um and mm -hmm. we do have some um sort of standby you know superwash merino and nylon you know that sort of a thing which are great for socks but we also stock a range of sort of luxury fibers at an affordable ish price um that people yeah. can use in their natural state or dying so for example here's something i prepared earlier hello example hello example um this is superwash merino yak and silk Oh my gosh! And it's is that, a that's single. natural. Yeah, and it's naturally this gray. Now I realize yeah. the light in here is a little bit yellow, but it's naturally that's a silvery that. gray. Yeah, and it's beautiful to work with. Um, it's a beautiful color to work with. It also dyes really well. Oh, uh, it would make the most beautiful depth of colors because of yeah. that natural gray under it already. Yeah, it's so beautiful, and because this particular yarn is a single, it's got so much drape and a lot yeah. of length for the weight yeah so, so I was gonna ask what's your meterage on it um I think it's 120 grams in 100 
so 400 meters, 120 grams, I think. I should have written that part down. I didn't write that part down. That's all right. That's okay. But I just recently knit a sweater out of it. Do you want to see the sweater that I knit out of it? Yeah, I think we need to see the sweater. I'm going to make you big again so we can see the sweater. I'm not going to try it on because I haven't blocked it yet. It needs a good block, but I can show right. you. Oh, oh wrong, that's you big. Wrong person face. Hang on. There we <laughs> there go. We okay. So this is the card again. Oh, my so gosh. And it's a honeycomb brioche, which I'd never done before. Again, we need squish of vision. Amazing. Squish of vision. It's that and it's got gorgeous. Yeah. So I used just short, uh, just over two skeins of yarn to make this, and I made a size medium. Um, it yeah. weighs less than three hundred grams, so it's really light. But that yeah. yak is really warm and light. Mm. So yak I tried is it on. It's a hollow cord fiber. Yeah, it is. And and with the silk, it gives it just that little bit of weight. And yeah. I tried it on yesterday um, just to make sure that it fit after I cast off. And when I took That's it off, I realized it was keeping me warm. Yeah. You know that feeling when you, when you don't realize yeah. you're warm until you take it off. So this is a pattern off. called um, Mayma Cardi by Pip and Pin. She's a, a Canadian designer. It's a three-quarter length. Hang on, let me see. Three-quarter length sleeve. And it comes down. It covers my waist. It goes once, once I block it. Yeah, it'll cover my waist. But that honeycomb brioche in this single is yeah. got so much drape and it's so squishy. Oh my gosh! And that natural color is just gorgeous. Yeah, so, it is, and I'm really excited about it. Julie Redding's got a question for you while uh -huh. you, while you squish that gorgeous cardi. Yep. What is your favorite fiber to spin or to knit with that's in your fiber art shed range? Oh goodness. Um, okay, so I have two. One, I have to say, it's is this, hard. Yak, it's hard this yak know. yarn, I have to say, but it's probably because I just knit with it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited and about it. because your hand memory. Yeah. And it's just so nice. Um, and I really enjoy, we have a four ply yak silk merino yarn and an eight ply. And it's warm and light and the color's lovely and it's versatile. And because it's got that super wash merino in it, it gives it a bit of um, I don't know, longevity in some ways. I feel like yeah. I can shove it in my bag if I'm warm and, and it's it not won't gonna fall, fall yeah. apart. Um, so that's the first thing. The other thing that I really like to spin are the bats that we sell. Um, yeah. We make bats on our carding machine, which is a large two and a half ton carding machine. Um, and we specialize in these things called scrappy bats. And my lovely assistant here is just going to grab one so I can show you. Um, I don't have any that I'm spinning at the moment because I was saving them all to sell here at the big wool show. I thought I wouldn't yeah. spin any. Um, and yeah. they're hard to see because they're wrapped in cello. But they're 100 grams or 110 grams of 23 micron merino in a variety of colors. And what's really fun is that what's on the outside may not be what's on the inside. Oh. So, yeah. So what that happens like is that potluck. it is. So you see all these colors behind me. Yeah. Um, they come in kilo bags. And when we yeah. weigh them off, I often give out a bit more than 100. So by the end of the bag, I've got a bit left over. That's an odd yeah. amount. And we throw those all in a bag. And then we chuck them on the carding machine. And it comes out in these beautiful bats that are a joy to spin. And yeah. unlike bats from a hand carding machine, these bats, because they're done on a commercial machine, are they have a lot of, I don't know, like, like the fibers seem really long. Yeah. yeah. And I spin them quite, I'm not a fantastic spinner, but I spin them sort of medium fine. My son, who's eight and a half, who has a little business called Red Cheetah, he spins them thick and thin and then plies yeah. them with a thread. Um, yeah. And they're easy, that he can spin them and he loves to spin them that way. They're really easy to spin and they're like instant gratification. Yeah. Gosh, they sound amazing. I might have to, mm. what sort of price are we looking at for those? Yep. So they are $13.50 for 100 grams, I think, or $14.50. And then if it's 110 grams, then it's sort of the price is based on that. Yeah. 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 Um, and there's a, there's a few left on the website. If people want to buy them and there aren't any left, you can sign up for back in stock notifications and you can send yeah. me an email because I can make more on the, sh yeah. on the machine. I just, yeah. Yeah. Like there's limited hours in a day. Um, yeah. Tilly Timperm is asking, um, they're on the central coast of New South mm. Wales. Is the fiber art shed open as a shop to visit? So we, it is sort of by appointment, and that's not just a COVID thing, although now I'm glad I have that in place. Um, before the COVID thing, we also were open by appointment only. only. It's a shed that we have set up 
um, at our house. So yeah. I just need to make sure that I'm home, not running errands or yes. picking up the boys or at cricket training. Um, so just send me a message. Our phone number is on the website. You can text me or you can send me an email or you can pick up the phone and ring me. Um, yeah. And you, we make an appointment. You're welcome to stop by. Um, in this era of COVID, it's nice to then keep track of who's been here in case there's a problem. Um, yeah. yeah. And so you're welcome to come. I mean, I can, I'll just pick up my phone and sort of show you. Mm. It's not too much. That'd be great. Around. But this is my shed. So we got lots of fiber and then we come around this way and then there's more and then there's more and then there's more. Oh my god! And, and we're more. all drilling right now. It's not just yeah. me. We are all drilling. God, I hope it's not just yeah. me. No. And <laughs> so when you come to shop it from us in person, it's a bit like a farmer's market. So we can yeah. weigh out um, any amount that you want. It's a bit like being at a show. We weigh out any yeah. amount you want. Um, but it also can be a bit overwhelming. People often walk in because they walk around the corner and then there's this big, huge room full of fiber. Oh my <laughs> gosh! So, yes, uh, the answer to Tilly's question was Yes, by appointment only. Okay. Well, that's good to know for everybody. Oh, and um, you don't have to be local. If you're driving through on the M1, we're yeah. two minutes from the freeway. So if you oh, want to stop. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I have another question for you. Okay. I can't remember what it was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it was just like it was from my shopping list, but my actual proper shopping list is inside. <laughs> oh. Because I'm trying to be good. Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Someone has popped in a qu another question here. Yep. Do you have the price of those um, Merino? Oh, yeah. yeah. And the other for sale? Yep. So they're $22 um, for either the single or the four ply or the eight ply. And I have the single and the eight ply, I think, still in stock. Um, yeah. Definitely the single. Definitely the single. And oh, again, so I'm, this one, like they've written in the comments, I've just been and checked them out. Okay. <laughs> there are still skeins of singles. <laughs> yeah, so there's still skeins of singles. Um, and again, you can sign up for the back and stock notifications. Um, so these and, are things you could get back in as well. Yeah. So they come, we get those from the UK. That shipper, yep. that vendor is still shipping. It's just a matter yep. of FedEx doing okay. their bit and yep. getting them here. Um, and if you don't want to miss out because it's the, free shipping this weekend we have free shipping through 10 p.m on monday if there's yeah. something like that that we've been talking about now that you want and when you go to the website it's sold out send me a message we'll sort something out you can still get the free shipping it'll be fine awesome yeah that's, that's good fine. um I, i'm in with the same bandwagon as you of those that have decided to go with the, sh the free shipping route mm. for, the, for the duration of this because that was one of the big advantages of bendigo was that yeah um, you didn't have to pay for the post. But in saying that, we're also not paying for accommodation. We're not That's paying it. entrance fees into Bendigo. Yeah. I'm not paying yeah. for uh, extra accommodation because it takes me two days to drive to Bendigo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, and, and petrol, like I've got a big van and I fill my van up with petrol. Um, and we did a similar sort of promotion the weekend of the Canberra Wool Expo in May and because yeah. that was cancelled as well. And it was the same sort of rationale. You know, we're yeah. not traveling, you know, why not? Yeah. And it, we've been, it's been really well received. Um, I don't like, I don't tend to do free shipping. This is not a thing that we do often. Yeah. I think it'll be a COVID thing um, for big events. Yeah. Um, we really are looking forward to getting back and seeing people in person and I being know. able to talk I in mean, person about how wonderful wool is. We're doing a great, like these are a good second place. Mm. But they yeah. are a second place to being able to hang out in real yeah. life. And I mean, and as much as we complain about the toilets and the freezing cold at Bendigo and, the, you know, the mediocre coffee. No, no, and, like, I'm sorry, did you say mediocre coffee? Well, in the shed where we are, it was mediocre. <laughs> like, because I wouldn't have even, like, the coffee that I get, um, yeah. I'm not even putting that on the mediocre scale. <laughs> I'm like, I get to the point where, okay, it's it's hot. That'll do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we're really looking forward to that next year. Everything, we still have one event that's still on for this year, later in the year. I think they're just waiting to see. Um, yeah. But everything else has been canceled. But, you know, we're still shipping. We're online. So, yeah. Yeah. I have another question here from Kath mm -hmm. Brown. She says, I've missed the name of that Cardi. By the way, I may have oh, already splurged. Right. So the Cardi is called Mama. M-A-E-M-A, -E I think. Yeah. 
And it's by Mayma Pip and Mayma Cardi by Pip and Pin. Okay. I've and I got it off Ravelry. I think she may have her own website. I follow her on Instagram. So Yeah. And it's a lovely, yeah. it was well written. It's size inclusive, the pattern. It's that drapey sort of cardigan thing that looks good on everybody. Tall, short, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and I think it would also work really well, like it's because it's big quite big in the front. I know that like yeah. when I had babies, it would have been a nice thing to wrap around them, you know. That's what oh, I'm nice. Mm. Nice. Yeah. I, I love stuff that's like drapey and nice. Yeah. I'm looking at your cardigan. I had no plan to add a cardigan to my queue, but <laughs> yeah, I I this can. one's so lightweight. It's great for like all seasons. Yeah, and, and I, I have think to also. It's for up okay. here. It's like we yeah. only want lightweight. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to add as well that I don't know the woman who's designed this. I'm just saying all this because I liked it. I'm not like it's not like sponsoring. Like, I'm just liking it. <laughs> we don't have to know someone to plug a good thing, do we? I know, because I just like scratch this, scratch. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I love like the yarns and I'm like desperately like I'll be sending a link to my husband for the uh advent, the advent calendar. calendar. <laughs> and I think yeah. that would be a really cool present to get. Um yeah. it's been like amazing chatting with you again, Claire. And Thank I you. I have to get in and get me a fiber baby. I need one. Um and yeah, i yeah, I think yeah that everybody needs to go and check out the Fibre Arts Shed because I think there is something for everybody there. Yeah, um, there between is. yarns and fibres and just beautiful tools and just kits to do things. I just think it's really like it's the all-encompassing check it out. Thank and, you. you know, and I'll just have my lovely assistant say bye since he's been standing okay. here the whole time. Bye. Bye, lovely <laughs> assistant. <laughs> so that's Paul and he helps me pack orders and he also works on the carding machine. So. Oh, awesome. Hi, Paul. <laughs> um, here we go. Someone else, uh, Danielle has popped in the, a, a message. It's the Mamer pattern by Megan no, no Decker. No yeah, Decker? That's Tip and pin. Um, yep. Thank you. So Thank you, Danielle. That, uh, make that pattern. And so you said that for your size, you use two of the skeins of singles. Two and, that's like two and a, a bit. I have a bit. I have, I probably use two and a quarter. Yeah. Um, yep. And I, you could make it a bit longer. That honeycomb brioche is lovely, but it's time consuming. Yes, it would be. So, yep. But it was lovely to, to do. And it, the pattern calls for a single, a superwash merino single, and the yak was a really good substitute um, for yeah. that. Uh, I, but yeah, so two and a two and a bit skeins. Buy, you know, you get three skeins and you're covered for most sizes. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like that sounds fantastic. Because like yeah, if so they're only twenty two dollars a skein as well, yeah. that makes a luxury garment for mm -hmm. like sixty six bucks. And if yeah. you order it now, there's no shipping to add to that. Yeah. So, so so I'm worried now that it might all sell out. So then send me a message because I'm a real person and I'll reply to your email and I'll say it's okay. I'll get you one. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, go and order all that yarn so that. Um, Claire has to order in more, and, <laughs> and then we and don't forget order. about the violent craft. And violent crafting is now a thing. Okay, a thing. violent crafting is now a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Thanks Chantel. So much, it's been so much fun. <laughs> I'll catch you next time. All right, bye. Bye. Oh wow, this has been such an exciting time. Um, we have got. Uh, another guest lined up and ready whose camera I cannot see yet, so I don't know if they're ready. Um, Danielle, did you want to come in for this one? No? Okay, so just checking, just checking. But we're not, Renelle's not ready yet, so um, when Renelle jumps in, um, I hope I'm saying her name right, I'm sure we'll be able to get that corrected, um, from Cloverleaf. Um, is she ready? I, I can't understand. You have to send me a message. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, I can see Danielle, but we can't communicate. So it's normally like a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Oh, here we go. Ronelle is ready. So I'm going to pop a Ronelle in and it looks like there are animals again, guys. There are animals. Okay. Hi, how are you going? Hi, can you hear my mic okay? 
or is it too weak? yeah there's a bit of a delay there? but we can hear you oh okay so hi Chantel thank you very much say hi you're this welcome is Finn. this is Finn hello Finn <laughs> he's very <laughs> one so I'm going to pop you big screen so we can just see you and your beautiful sheep baby. Okay. There you go. Oh, <laughs> little man. He's been very helpful. Um, so I thought I'd try and just say a quick hello from the shed. It's horrendously windy, so I apologise. Yep. If, if the noise is too much, let me know and I'll go inside. Um, I will definitely let you know, but it's good for now. Yes, yes. So the boys were all in here. They were quite amused by all the plastic bags. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought I'd just spend a bit of time talking about uh, the sheep and the property and the farm and I guess what I'm looking for in, in fleece in having the yep. yarn made. Yes, please. So Ronell, it's, it's Ronell. Am I saying it right? Yes, Ronell. Ronell. Um you own and run Clover Leaf Stud, is that right? Yes, Clover Leaf Corydales. I, I normally have Corydales. I'll just close yeah. his ears. Um, but I've just acquired this beautiful boy from Maureen at Fairfield Fins. So he's Amazing. So he's the only fin that you have? He's the only fin that I have. Oh, wow. Phone. Sorry. Yeah, it, it's, it's probably around a little bit in the wind. People are getting seasick. There we go. There go. A bit more weight. Awesome. <laughs> so you so you normally go with the Corriedales. What makes you just what makes you decide to run Corriedale over any of the other standard breeds that we have? Uh, it was well, I grew up in far north Queensland, so I hadn't clapped eyes on a sheep until about 2014. Oh wow. So I didn't really, so I, did, I couldn't spell sheep until a couple of years ago. So <laughs> So there, sorry. I just did a lot of research on what breeds there were. I was really taken with the heirloom, uh, the older breeds. But yeah. as I didn't know sheep at the, uh, much about the sheep at the time, I thought I'd go with a commercial um, that was very robust. It suited our climate. Uh, yeah. We don't get wool rot because we get a lot of rain. It gets very cold. They've got good feet. And yeah. it was a way... For me, then I opened the stud to then take the sheep to the shows to learn, to take them to the big commercials. So mm -hmm. I could mm -hmm. say, tell me about the sheep, tell me about the breed, tell me about the fleece and meeting yeah. the big wool classes and those kind of things. And shockingly, we've done really well in the shows from year one, which is a, a little weird. Um, it's, it's a bit so, different, yeah. but it's good. Yeah. So, yeah, so got lots of prizes with the fleeces, but it's been very interesting uh, showing. It's like they're like big poodles. I had no idea you had to trim them <laughs> and wash them. Blow dry them. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, oh, really good tip. Second year showing. I had a, a sheep with a, a bit of a messy behind. And um, so apparently wool wash for delicates works really well in washing a sheep's behind. Tip for like all. while it's on the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. it. I'm just going, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the sheep are gone now. They will come back at some point. We should both well, yeah. start rattling some bags again. Yeah. Yes. So, so um, what made you decide to jump into having your sheep's full spun? Look, I, I fell in love with the fleece and yeah. I was selling the raw I was selling the raw fleece and that was mm -hmm. selling well. But I'm just mesmerized by the artisans, by the yarns and the colours and the types of yarns and the knit. It's just it's just incredible. I, I don't understand why craft is seen as craft and not as art, art. a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they I agree with you. Yeah, it's crazy. It, just, it blows yeah. me away. So, um, my uh, dad is an artist, like a legit, like he's a sculptor and painter, and mm -hmm. my brothers are all arty. And we, I used to joke that I was like the paint by numbers girl in our family. Yeah. Um, and he, one day, he just just did the whole stop, and I was just like, oh, what have I done? You know, when Dad used that voice, and I was like, what, Dad? And he goes. You don't understand what you do is useful. 
you keep people warm. You let people be creative in the colors that they're working with. And you make things that make it possible. Because if there was like an apocalypse, I'd come to your place. Yeah. And I was just like, what? Why? And he goes, because you could make like fishing nets and all sorts of things. And and he said, and you just create yeah. stunning colours. And coming from Dad, who's like a great painter, um, to hear him say that he likes how yeah. I mix my colours, it was a bit of a thing. So, yeah, I, I think it's an art. I don't think it's a craft. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Side tangent. Sorry about that. <laughs> No, no, that's it is so true. So certainly I'm I'm not a supplier that's looking I, I, I don't see myself as an artisan as such. I want to provide a product that's true to the animals but also true to an industry. So looking to have the right fleece that is a very good fleece to make very good yarn and then getting a consistent product so then people then know what they're getting. So yeah. I only have two products at the moment of yarns. And I'm probably looking to increase to maybe two other different types of yarns. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, sort of. Are you, are you able to share with us what those other yarns are yeah, that you're yeah. hoping so to have? Well, actually, start with the ones you have. Start with what you've got. The ones I have is I have a four ply and an eight ply mm -hmm. at the moment, just to yeah. help fill that market. So the four ply is a. Let me show you one I prepared earlier. Fantastic. <laughs> So this is, where's my camera? Yeah. Four ply. Lovely. And I have some wonderful dyes. So I'm linking with wholesale I, dyes. I've heard that you have some wonderful dyes working with you. I have some wonderful <laughs> dyes. So I have Danielle from Raptor Yarns is yep. dyeing up four ply and eight ply for me to sell yep. from the shop. Um, other dyes that I'm linked in with is uh, Secreta from Homespun Yarns. Homespun. Yeah. Sorry, Secreta. Webspun Wears, so on her yep. Etsy shop. And also Erica for By Carola Down Under. Um, yep. I think she's part of the Big Wool Show as well. Okay. Um, so my aim, my aim is to link in with those providers. Sorry, there's sheep running everywhere. Um, That's all right. Yeah, just to link in with that network. I don't want to be everything. I just want to provide yeah. a really good product for them people to use. So to have those artisans, the artists like listening, oh, who was it? Claire. Um, I just all oh, like Sadie, all of them, just the talent that they have in dying. Um, and I know saying like, just, just have a go and have a try. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Look, it's really fun dying yarn. It really <laughs> is. I just, I just cut on my sheep. <laughs> well, because like we look I'm at the, like, the whole sheep. sheep rearing thing as well, like oh no, and like, and sheep yeah. farmers like it's fine. Just you know, you get a yeah. sheep and you care for them. You learn how to care for them, and yeah. it's yeah. like no, nope, it's not fine. Um, so you've got your four and eight ply in the in the pure Corriedale. What yeah. were the sneaky new bases you're thinking of of trying to put together? Ah, uh, so that's a uh, another. An eight ply by one of the dyes. Can, where's my camera? I'm back you know, in front. Sorry. Back, oh, yeah. There you go. Right there is perfect. The zigging when I'm supposed to be zagging. Yeah, it's opposite than what you what you need. Um, that's a gorgeous colour. Yeah. So they're beautiful colours. Um, the other ones yeah. that I'm looking at are is a four strand four ply. Yeah. With a bit more of a tighter spin, it probably won't be competitive against the sock yarns with acrylic. Um, yeah, and I realise, and I realise that it's a completely different market from a knitting perspective. So talking to some of my friends, like, which do you prefer, a two ply full strand? Can we do a doodle poll? What do people prefer, a two ply, two strand, or a no, sorry, a two strand four ply or a four strand four ply? It is. Like it's doing, one of those things. It's like um, that. I personally like a four strand four ply because you normally get a rounder yarn, which when yeah. you're working cables and things like that, it makes them just pop out of your garment. Um, yeah. Whereas when I'm working, like if I want to work a, a lace project and mm -hmm. I want, um, I will tend to probably go more for the two ply for that. But I'm like, I'm a bit like, how do I put this? 
I'm a spinner before I was a knitter. So I crocheted, then spun, then knit. That's sort of the transition for me. Um, and so I learned how to construct the, my, the yarn I wanted for the different projects, whereas I don't think a lot of people really understand the importance of different constructions for different yeah. projects and that, that we need to have all of these things so that we can mm -hmm. choose like a four ply for our tables and our two ply for our like you know our things that we want softer and flatter or, or more that you're going to block more openly you know yes. so i think we need both i'm like just make that okay <laughs> <laughs> what does everybody then, in the chat think like do you guys think yeah like, do you, let us when, know. You, when you're planning a project like there's 92 people watching right now when you're planning a project, do you consider the construction of the yarn or do you just go four plies, four plies, four ply? So do you like a rounder yarn for your more um, structural projects? So let us know in the chat and we'll pop them up and, you know, Ronell and I can learn from, from this as well. That would be brilliant. And and I'm allowed as of 30 minutes ago, so I'm also talking with the um, amazing guys at Great Southern Yarns. Um, yeah. Andrew to looking at linking in with a 10 ply. Oh, wow. Link in to support those that US uh, market. So that would be interesting as well. Oh, and you know, 10 plies are becoming used more in Australia as well. So yeah. there's um, a lot of, not many companies supply an Australian 10 ply. And that's why, like, because I, I, I sell a lot of hand dyed yarn and I get asked all the time, do I have a 10 ply? Like, no, but I've got a lofty eight ply. And they're like, yeah, I wanted a 10 ply. And it's because a lot of people are using American patterns that are calling for worsted weight yarn. And once, yeah. you know, worsted is an Australian 10 ply. So, um, you know, it's it's becoming a, a more accepted um um, size thickness so yeah I'm like, yes, please, can fly. <laughs> yeah so at the moment look I'm getting the colors done with the dyes more because I'm so interested in how it dyes and how it knits up and because it's a new product so this is year two for me so I'm yeah. on an exponential learning curve um, mm -hmm. I still have some of the uh, Corydale mohair blends so that was my yeah. first one that was done at Goldfields mohair farm yeah. Uh, so it's a semi it's a semi woolen, not a yeah. a worsted. So it's a little bit more crispy. But the yeah. colours that she's getting out of them are just are just incredible. Oh look at that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, that's Katrina from Pirate Pearl Yarns is made. But yeah, so but ultimately what I'll be doing is I'll be looking to link in with with existing businesses just to provide yeah. a consistent product. So you know, Katrina at Pirate Pearl Yarns, if you, she does all the eight ply. So if you're yep. looking for some amazing eight plies, go to her website. If you're looking for some whole plies, go to Erica and Suprita. Um, and yep. ten, yarn, ten, 10 ply will be through uh, Great Southern. Oh, wow. So we've, we've had a couple, of quest, a couple of answers to our questions. So Mel Harrison has said, being a crocheter, I would love some Z twists. So the, the natural motion of crochet tends to untwist yarn as you're working with it um, because when you crochet, you are twisting and you normally are twisting in the opposite direction of the yarn. So Z-twists are really handy for crocheters. Also for weavers, um, if you actually warp with a Z-twist and then weave or, or weft mm -hmm. with an S-twist, your actual weaving seems to nearly, um, it has more light reflections in it so yeah. it actually creates a, a brighter weave, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So having mm -hmm. access to both Z and S twists are good for both crocheters and for weavers. Mm -hmm. um, and then also Vicky Jenkins has said, yes, please consider strands, love for strands. Oh, awesome. So, awesome. yeah. So she's like. Beauty, yeah. And the beauty of what, uh, with the mills, I mean, it's a bit slow at the moment. Um, my yarn was due in February and it's, it's coming, but I, I get that I get that they had they're that busy. They're very busy. Um, they have a minimum, so if you want to do a batch of a trial batch of yarn, if you order like a minimum of five kilos, they'll do it for you. So if yeah. anyone has some creative streaks, we can have a crack and just have a yeah. look and at, see how, at how it goes. Absolutely. Um, Bell has said, "I'll admit I don't really understand yarn construction, but I'll try anything." 
And then she's also gone on to say, also, yes, 10 ply. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, talk to Andrew and Jennifer soon. <laughs> yeah, no, that'll be awesome. Um, yeah. Andrew and Jennifer, or Andrew has been on a couple of times. Um, so, you know, it'll, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah, definitely. It's always about playing. And again, sorry, is that wind too loud? It's okay. We, we can bear. we got the boys coming back in. Um, come on, Finny. Let's go. There you go. Uh, I guess that's the interesting thing. Oh, hello. I'll, I will um, pop him back in big um. again. <laughs> they just uh, crunch the bags. Do they think you've got something for them and they're just like, what is in there? Yeah, yeah. He, he normally comes for a scratch anyway regardless. He's so pretty tactile compared to some of the other sheep. He's become really quiet. Are you, are you looking, Maureen, at what we do to our sheep here? <laughs> um, oh, he's pushing me. Yeah, and I guess, I mean, on the farm, I mean, I really want to promote the animals and where the fibre comes from and their story. So, you know, on yeah. the property, you know, it's a, it's a big community, so we have limited numbers to make sure we, the land is managed appropriately. We've got circulating water systems um, that's gravity fed, so we don't rely on electricity. We've got yeah. solar panels. We don't use chemicals. Um, and yeah, and everyone's got a forever home. People may have seen we've got an old boy that's struggling, but but he's staying. Um, yeah, yeah, he's all right. And what else do we have on the property? So it's sort of building into that community. I mean, the community in yeah. Bulgaruk is amazing. We have an animal refuge on the property. Yeah. So we offered land to them. So they rescue, rehabilitate. Oh, you're pushing me. <laughs> rescue, rehabilitate. <laughs> There we go. You've got to put your head up. Um, kangaroos and wombats with the occasional oh, wow. things. Yep. Oh wow! Um, and has anyone heard about the national oh, uh, uh, adopt a backpacker program? Uh, no. You need to tell us about that. I think. So with with COVID and everything that's going on, uh, there's a, a national adopt a backpacker program. So we've now also just officially adopted a, a backpacker. <laughs> <laughs> because they can't get home or if they go home. No, they're, they're stuck home. and they've got no income. Yeah, yeah. So we put her on the books. We don't have a lot to do because our, our bed and breakfast at the moment is closed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So That's actually a really cool <laughs> initiative because, um, like, you know, we do look at, like, some of the problems that Australia is facing in general as part of COVID, but one of the mm. things that, and, and it's crop, crept up every now and again, but I don't think people really do realise the plight of people on working visas because they just, like, it, 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 the simple answer is to say to go home, but there's, they, they can't. There are no flights yeah. leaving. And yeah. so, you know, it's, it's not a simple solution. And mm. then they're stuck here. They're not eligible for anything, any assistance. Mm. Yeah. And they're human yeah. beings. They need food. They need shelter. And they need to feel like not a pariah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's she's brilliant. I mean, she goes out and she's checking the waters for the sheep for me. And when we had the B&B when it was running, she was working there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, just fantastic. I guess it's just it's all about people and linking in and making those networks and, yeah. Yeah, and caring for, for your community in a general way as well. Yeah. Just. Yeah, and being yeah, yeah. um, someone that, that that the community knows that they can go, hey, Ronell, we've got this idea. What do you think? And no, you're not going to shoot him down in flames. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go. Well, I don't know, but yeah. But what yeah. is what is that in your? What's this fluffy? <laughs> Look at the staple length on that. So this is what wow. I'm aiming for. So you know, I was listening to Wendy and she was saying um, yesterday, oh, yes, I have a uh, Merino cross English Leicester. And I was about to say, so it's a Corriedale. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> oh, <gosh>. oh. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy. Oh. I had a bit of a chuckle. But, yeah, so I put about, about five fleeces left. So each of the fleeces, they cut quite a bit. So the boys are cutting on average about eight kilograms. And yeah. the girls scooted, I get about five, five and a half kilos from the girls. Um, yeah. I have so a soft spot in my heart for Corridales. That is the very first fibre I ever spun 
was a beautiful mm. Corydale cross that was chocolate brown. I still remember. And it was gorgeous oh. to work with. Um, yeah. You've got your beautiful, like how many Corydale are you running? So I have, oh, excuse me, I have 80 yeah. uh, on the property. But my aim is also linking in with some of the larger businesses, like the dyers and the distributors. Yeah. Is, there's a big network now. So there's a lot of youth coming through the Corridale Society that mm -hmm. don't have land. So I have two students here that came up yeah. through the Corridale Schools programs. So they've started yeah. up their own little studs. So they are just a couple of paddocks here as well. Yeah. And I'm keen to find a market for them. So what I'm looking to do yeah. is I'm very particular on the on the fleece that I use because Corridale, being a crossbred, so you've got your Merino and then your broad English Leicester, it can yeah. be pretty changeable or a bit random sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you may get Corridale, but it may be quite coarse and harsh or you may get Corridale yeah. that much. So I, that's why I'm really particular on the fleeces that I have that I put into the yarn and similarly. Yeah. So I'd like to link in with these young you know, they're all under 25. They have yeah. these sheep that are, you know, and they've got, most of them have really good fleeces. So I'm keen to then bring in them into the fold and say, all right, look, let's put in together or I'll buy their fleeces above market. And then we provide a conduit for them to start making a living and a bit of money from something that yeah. they love. Yeah. So that's what I'm excited about as well. It's just, just oh, building that. Oh, that amazing. Yeah, so... But yeah, so black curry we're talking about. Oh, oh, she's black, not wow. So she Look got um. That. That's the last one. Danielle might have a bit of an announcement at some point. She's not super long, but um, she won. She got champion at the show at Bendigo last year. If anyone was watching the Coloured Sheep show. Oh, I always watch the Coloured Sheep at Bendigo. I'm a tragic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we've got some, yeah. I mean, I just find, I just think Danielle's dying. And I just, I get so excited about seeing this and then seeing the garments and people are making vests. So obviously being a medium. Yeah. So my fleece average is about 27 micron on average. Yeah, which is um, about, my... like, for those people watching, if you buy anything from, say, um, Peyton's brand in their yarns, they run yeah. normally 28s to 32s. So, oh, it, it, okay. it, so you've got your, um, your, yours is coming in at 27 and they're still just, they're still soft. It all comes down to the milling and the, and how it's being created yeah, and the yeah. quality. I've, like, I've you can have a, a scratchy 27, a, a scratchy 27 micron because they've kept all the shortcuts in and made it scratchy. I'm so glad you said that. I've got three different lines um, at Corrida from yeah. Victorian uh, studs and I've just yeah. bought in a ram from New South Wales. They has the most amazing fleece. Um, so, so he has a 26 micron fleece as an old ram, so he's going to bring down my girls, which is great. But one of the lines I bought in, I don't use their fleeces because even though it's beautiful fleece, it's scratchy. Whereas yeah. from some other bloodlines, the fleece is still nice, but it's not doesn't have that scratchiness. So I just don't yeah. know what it is about. I don't know if it's purely subjective, but it just feels to me if you spin one up, it's a bit scratchy, and the other ones, like if I spun that up, it's not scratchy. It's just yeah. so I'm really picking my lines as well. Yeah, yeah. like 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 in everything, and I, you know, if anyone watches my YouTube channel, you've probably heard me say this before. Things are not created equal, mm. and you need to yeah. test and check for yourself, and not just make assumptions. Mm. You need to actually get it and try it. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, and I think it's really important to understand, like in the milling processes, if a mill decides to keep your shorter cuts that can actually increase the scratchiness and that's why mm -hmm. some walls are scratchier than others and some people are like, I don't wear wool because it's scratchy. And it's just like, but have you tried this wool? And then they touch it and like, oh, my God, it's like butter. And you're like, mm, yes, because not all wool is created equal. 
<laughs> and it's so interesting because growing up in Queensland, I had one jumper and it was this wool jumper and it was yeah. so itchy, I just couldn't stand and it's so I've always hated wool. And yeah. then I thought, oh, well, what do people do in Victoria when I moved down? They'll have sheep. I'll get some sheep. How hard can it be? Um, <laughs> so, and just, and then this is a, you know, a medium wool that is, yeah. is just astounding. I mean, yeah. to be fair, when you see merino, you go, oh my God, look at that. But um, yeah. I, I still consider myself a beginner spin because I find, merino too soft for me yeah but um, and that's the thing merino is it's not a big enough fiber just, i don't think i think corridors are amazing so um, oh, it's you don't have smell of vision I, yeah well like we need <laughs> vision and smell of vision danielle can we organize squishy vision and smell of vision for next year yeah. she's like and yeah sure it. let's do that i love so i had a friend <laughs> Oh, wait, I think we're starting to lose you right now. <laughs> and I have, uh, like, some amazingly talented friends. So um, a friend. Oh. oh. Can you hear me? I th or I'm yeah, I, I think going. you're starting to cut right out. I'll move. I'll move. Yeah, might be a good idea. You're here? Yeah, you can, you can go, like, you're on. Right, yeah. Moving might be a good idea. Right, excuse me. Oh. Yeah. It's going to be I really have... windy for a tick. All right. It's going to be really windy in a tick, and I'm going to go up to the house. Okay. All right. Go All right. What I'm going to do is I might have a chat while Ronell moves. I um, I, I'm just like looking. My my family have just come back from a trip to the shop, and I've got a window, and I just watch the window slide open, and um, and like they're trying to talk me through the window, like, and then the next thing you know, I just disappeared, <laughs> like just straight through the window. I'm like, okay, thanks for that. Um. So Ronelle's just moving up the farm. Like she's she's like full of running, you guys. Like like we're super grateful because like I wouldn't have run for you at all. There's no way that would happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've gotten heaps better, Ronelle. All right. Whew. Inside. <sighs> I have sheep poo on my on my shoes. Oh, it's look, it's bound to happen. It's bound to happen. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So we Oh, you're in and out of the wind. Lisa Larson, you did miss the sheep. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. and I think I'm not sure what's going on there with Renell's internet. Um Linda Soka has written oops. Um Personally, I like a round of yarn, generally avoid single ply for garments and seek a high twist for socks, but otherwise love the natural woolly yarns and the four ply fingering for her climate in Sydney. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. So you learnt some more information. It's awesome. So is my internet okay now? Yes, it is. It's heaps better. Is this is this this looks like a dive room? Or a samples room. So this is, <laughs> this is, I actually took a lot of my, uh, so this is my little, what was supposed to be a theatre room, but I commented yeah. it from my husband. Um, so because we have the bed and breakfast, um, I still got Danielle's. <laughs> so because we have the bed and breakfast here, people still come, they do little crafty, yeah, uh, little crafty days. I'm trying to work out where to put my phone. Um, yeah. Yes, I'm just going to have to hold it. Sorry. Yeah, that's all right because we've got we've got Kathy who's ready to jump in for the next slot. Um, I just wanted to see if anybody in the chat had any final questions for Ronell. And Ronell, did you have anything that you wanted to make sure that we knew 
before we went away? Like something in particular you wanted to draw attention to that's available on your site or, or anything like that? No, just have a quick visit. We've got, I've still got about, you know, 20 kilos of fleece left, uh, some beautiful double comb tops through Cashmere Connections. Yeah. Um, that's fabulous, yes. Cool. All right. Um, Lisa is, is sad that she has missed the sheep. And Lisa, it was beautiful. Um, we're going to see Ronelle again tomorrow. So if you think of any questions, make sure you come back and add those in um, and we can check out all the goodies and maybe see more sheep. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll bring the boys in. I'll lure them in with some food. Oh, <laughs> Boys yay. and food. Boys and food, it always works. <laughs> we were joking about sheep like teenagers. <laughs> I thank you so much. No worries. It was great to meet you today, Ronelle. Hey, thanks so much, guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, we have got lined up next Kathy Johnson from Cat and Sparrow. Um, so I'm going to bring Kathy in. Are you ready to go? Like a little thumbs up. Here we go. Um, oops. Hi, how are you going? Hi, good. How are you, Santa? I really missed you. Oh, I miss you too. You yeah. Um, okay. yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. Kat, okay. Kathy and I would be um, Bendigo shed neighbours. I know. Um, this is awesome. We, you know, <laughs> yeah. neighbours. <laughs> we're, we're our neighbours in our homes today. today. Yeah. So, Kathy, you had been down at Bendigo for years and years and then you had you went away for work and then you were coming yeah. back and then this happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how have you found the reception that you've received of like coming back and getting back into it? Was it hard to sort of focus back on it again? Um hard for me. Um yeah. I, I, to, yeah it's it's difficult for me um to get back into that mindset because um as you said uh, I've been away for work and um but that's not too bad because I, I got catch up with Sparrow when I was in the UK and uh, you yeah. know, we were doing uh, we were back in the Cat and Sparrow team. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun. Anymore. Yeah. Um but when I came back um I uh, well, there were some some personal issues at home, and you know, I, it's I got divorced, and uh, and then I had to downsize. Oh, wow. okay. and, yeah, <laughs> so, That's yeah, it's a, yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's good for me uh, personally. That's a you know, it's a necessary step that has to happen. Um, but yeah. um, uh, in terms of getting back into Cat and Sparrow, uh, start to dying again, it took me a long time to actually get back into it that's personally yeah. but the reception I received is it, it, overwhelming I'm really really so um overwhelmed like yesterday it was it really was like the first day in Bendigo and thank yeah. you so chaos. much yes it's a <laughs> chaos but thank you so very much to all my old customers and new customers and uh, I'm I'm really grateful for the welcome you gave me yesterday and just yeah <laughs> Oh, that's that's wonderful. That's beautiful. I'm glad that you've been like welcome back into our community again. I mean, you never went away, really, but do you know what I mean? <laughs> I know, it's, I know. I was still chatting on socials. You were still there. <laughs> yes, yes, I was. <laughs> yes. And so you had a, had a big day yesterday. Yep. Um, and you know, this has been a question I've been asking sort of people is like, obviously. Some things move better than other things move. Yes. Is there something that you still have left that you would like to share with everyone who's <laughs> Yes, I do have uh, that. The, so my shelf is pretty empty now. And uh, I think that that's me underestimated Bendigo. And um, uh, it was um, something I made a rookie mistake. I didn't prepare enough. And, yes, and, and also and you and me both, you and me both, Kathy. Yeah, uh, and and uh, uh, you know, uh, well, because uh, like I, I had to chuckle when you said you start dying madly a month before. That was me. <laughs> that, that was uh, <laughs> so because um, you know uh, I wasn't going to do anything. As I said, I, I I wasn't really in the mood. I 
you know, couldn't get back in. I found, I found it difficult to get back into it. Um, and then and Danielle organized this big wool show and then sort of that was the necessary kick in the butt I needed. And, and you know what? <laughs> Me too. Me too. Yeah. It was so easy to just be like, oh, well, there's no events. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah I know. Um, Danielle, I have a question for you. She's yeah. written, I love your show. Did you make it? I did, I did. This is the um, Stephen West, uh, Excuse Me, Pancho, and it's in uh, brioche, so it's yeah. kind of double-sided. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, it's not in my hand-spun, old oh, hand-dyed yarn, because I made this last year when I was in Leeds. Um, yeah. I was, you know, I didn't, I, I did bring some stuff with me, but I didn't have uh, access to, you know, all my stuff at home. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, this is the yarn, it, it's actually uh, drops alpaca. Yep. Yeah, so it's very oh, warm. It's nice and toasty for you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm really feeling the cold in Melbourne today. <laughs> yes, I've been hearing yeah. it's really cold down there at yeah. the moment. Yeah, yeah. And I'm probably, um, I'm probably very glad I'm at home. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, definitely. Oh, uh, back to your question. Um, yeah. I, I found uh, the sold out, uh, the card logo sold out, and as it always does, he's really yeah. popular. And Loch Fine, uh, the new colorway introduced this year, um, both light and dark have gone now. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all gone. And uh, the Ruby Knight, uh, the, the, the new blend, uh, yeah. Merino silk and lin uh, flax, um, yeah. that's in, uh, that one's gone. Um, mm. And um, I don't know, there's some... Others are, think, are, are people the, able to back order or request in some way these yes. ones that are gone or are they gone for good? Uh, yeah. Well, they can back order, but it's going to take a long time but, because um, I run out some of the bases as well. And, because, you know, and, and what's been happening for a lot of us is our yeah. supply chain is very slow at the moment. Absolutely. Um, I do have... <gasps> this one in the it's still damp <laughs> this is still damp i just i just caked it up and just to show you what it is this is the yeah. same blend as as the ruby knight is merino uh, uh silk and flax that the this bit so you can see kind of a brownie bit is the flax because it doesn't take dye in, in the acid dye. In the same way, that's uh, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, as you know. So it it left it has a little bit color on it, um, but mainly left just a natural color. Um, what this is is actually a long gradient. It's a very, very long oh gradient. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. And uh, I dyed it in the way, I, I don't know. I'm going to make I you big so you've got a bit more room. Right. There you go. I dyed, yeah, it's a very long gradient because I, I braided it. And if if I if I unbraid it, it's really long. Um, yes. So I, I, I dyed it in the way you can see the gradient that as spinners, you can break up in the middle here. And mm. you spin your two singles. And you can oh. ply. You you can yeah. you can ply them then ply them together and then they yeah. should fairly match. Um, yeah. You so you have your your gradient. Yeah, that'd scale. be gorgeous. Yeah. So, um, I it's not in the shop yet. So I will put it in the shop soon, but uh, because it's still damp, I I still need to wait for it to dry and take photos and upload and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So. <laughs> this, this is a thing to remember, everybody, is that that. A lot of us, because we are at home, usually if we sell out a Bendigo, it's like, oh, well, you'll have to wait till we get home and all this sort of stuff. But if you keep coming back to everyone's stalls day after day after day, now I don't know if it's the case for everybody, but I know a lot of the dyers are actually still dying. And so they are dying overnight and they're getting yarns put into their stores the next day. And so they're getting things ready. So just keep checking back. Don't think that just because you've missed out, you've missed out. You may miss a colorway, but you might be able to come back to something new that the people that were here on Friday didn't even get a chance to see. 
So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, we're here um, till Monday, people. We're here till Monday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Does that? Especially, you know. Uh, also, the weather doesn't really help. In summer, we could, you know, we could die and dry in one day. But um, yeah, uh, now it's taking a long time. But I still have some of these gorgeous. Oh, I want to show you these on. gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Um, these. I, I'm really actually um, in love with this blend. It's a marine, super fine merino and a cashmere blend. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's all Australian and from uh, the, the, the tops are from cashmere connections. Um, Lovely. It was, yeah, it was actually a huge, I, I bought a huge bump from Trish. Um, well, that that's a story um, before I went away. <laughs> okay, I, I, I want to um see trish uh at cashmere connections um yeah. back that that was back in 2018 yeah 2018 after our mm -hmm. bendigo and i was on the high and i ran out of stuff i went to see trish i wanted to get something and i had yeah. a you know so i got this huge bump of um uh cash merino blend i got home then um I realized I, you know, I got interview from um, Leeds um, and uh, they did a Skype interview to offer me the job and it was a fantastic opportunity. I couldn't let go. Uh, well, I, I could, but I want, I really wanted to do no, it. That's right. um, no, no. Yeah. You don't let go of fantastic opportunities like and that. I, so, um, so I went and then so that bump, um, I just didn't do anything. <laughs> I just stay so, there waiting I, for you to come home. Yes. Oh, come home and make me pretty. I know. So when I came back and then this time and uh, yeah, I just, um, I, I just died up. Uh, this is so soft and oh so squishy. Oh my gosh. Squishy. Yeah. Uh, this is called Isabel. This is uh, Calypso uh, Coral. And these two colorways, um, I, I was just uh saying to my friend will and uh, that i wasted the, the first lockdown because i was playing animal crossing <laughs> the, the entire time I, I didn't really do much crafting uh and anything i was just playing a lot of animal crossing. No, dying. Yeah. no but <laughs> i but, made three um, blankets <laughs> yeah well yay i know i saw yours i didn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> I, I I was just uh, you know I I was just playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> and, you gotta do um, what you gotta do. Yes, yeah, and and also you know that was when it's kind of a, I I needed to get myself you know, back into kind of a, a right headspace. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and and then so the inspirations come from um, the you know this from is the game. well. It's, yeah, Animal Crossing Isabel. If anyone plays Animal Crossing, you know this is Isabel. That's her bright, sunny yellow. Um, well, this is technically is not a character in Animal Crossing, but um, if you're in, you know, if you play this, you know the uh, Nintendo Switch issued a new uh, color just to go with um, Animal Crossing. This that coral. Oh. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm so glad it's not just me who like runs with the theme to the point yeah. of like <laughs> like if you don't yes. know about the switch, you don't know about these colors. It's that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And I said that's all our colors, you know, our colorways we had we had a lot of uh, Game of Thrones and you know when Rachel was here, um we were both into Game of Thrones. We had a whole collection of Game of Thrones themed colors and stuff. Um, and then I, I was into Outlander and um yeah. So yeah. you know, we had a yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah. Talk about Outlander, the um uh Lallybro run out again that was another uh oh. you know color work. yeah <laughs> yeah wow it just sounds like you've just had a lot of fun fun we've got some comments coming up um yeah. bell shepherd and, and lisa have both said like they i think they they need to learn how to spin oh um, yeah absolutely great like definitely yeah. learn how to spin yeah and bell's written, those colors together are my jam oh yes <laughs> You've got to love that. You've got to love yes. that. Yes. Yeah. I, I think I, I, if, uh, I don't know if I have this as of this morning, I haven't checked my orders yet. As of this morning, I have 
two standard uh, uh, spindles, the Turkish spindles left. Yeah, and, which is uh, great to learn on, by the way, yeah, ladies. But, yeah, ladies, but that's great. Uh, yeah, it's great to learn on, but I wouldn't recommend this to learn on because it's a merino and uh, cashmere. cashmere. Yeah, yeah, they're both short fibers. They are super, super soft, but they are short fibers and not ideal for beginners. Uh, I do have, uh, yeah, as of this morning, I do ha still have some uh, blue face Leicester and uh, silk blend. That's, yeah. uh, that's perfect for beginners to learn. Uh, to, yeah, uh, because the, it has fiber. yeah long yeah. fibers and the drafts beautifully. Do you yeah. still um, have any? I think it was Romney. Was it Romney? Oh no, you Romney. Have? You're talking uh, Rumbley. Yeah, uh, the Rumbley. Oh yes, 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 Rumbley. Oh, the the French Maria. Yeah, Rumbley. Yeah. Oh gone. I'm afraid. Yeah, oh. it's all gone. Uh, I remember you okay, in Bendigo. I have that, <laughs> that I bought over the last couple of Bendigos. I, I know more. you did. That's all it is. I just yeah, want to more. <laughs> I know, because <laughs> you kept coming back. And remember, I had to sneak some uh, under the table for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It feels, <laughs> no. You know what? Like, it feels a little self serving, some like chatting with you like this, because it's like, <laughs> like for you and Wendy, and it's like we are like shed mates. I know. So, we were, yeah. you know we're, and we're just being like cheeky and naughty with each other. And, yeah. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like hiding things. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I really, I really miss that. Yeah, that that social and that's aspect. Kind of things, isn't it? With like the yeah. whole um, camaraderie in the show. Oh yes. Oh yes. Absolutely. And the, and I miss that. You know, on Sunday we'd we'll be sneaking off and go and visit everyone. <laughs> Basically, what what happens on Sunday um, is a lot less of you come yeah. along to the show. And yeah. so our store holders literally walk away from our store <laughs> yes. and just go off and go and look yeah. at things. <laughs> yes, yeah. And go to each other's stalls and be cheeky and naughty and stuff, yeah. fiber up our jumpers and run away. And <laughs> Yeah, I know. And, and I found actually with the virtual show, uh, what I found yep. was nice that I could actually do shopping on the first day <laughs> instead of having to wait till Sunday when yes. lots of stuff, you know, all gone. And that's exactly right. Yeah. That, that, that's a huge advantage for us yeah. um, this year. Also, the, the, the no queue to the toilet. And, oh, yes. Um, Washing your hands with warm water. How novel is that? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I definitely miss like seeing um, yes. like the people at the stall. Um, but I have to say, I have am thoroughly enjoying this virtual event. Um, yes. Like running these live streams for this event has just been so much fun for me. Oh yes, just, yes, that is so yeah, so much, so much fun. You know, I, I still was, get to have the interaction in the talking, so I feel a bit yeah, spoiled. That's great. That's great. And and before coming on, I was really nervous and unsure because I was saying to Danielle, "Is like, oh, I don't know, and uh, you know, I don't know what to what I don't know what to talk about." And she said, "Oh, don't worry, Chantel will look after you. She's great." <laughs> So, and something yeah. for us to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's fantastic. And you feel better yeah. now? You're glad you came on? Yes, yes, I definitely feel better. Yeah, thank oh, that's you. Great. And, oh, and that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely miss this. And I miss the hugs, all the hugs. And, you know, in Bendigo, we have so many hugs. <laughs> we do. Yeah. We yes. really do. Can you imagine if Bendigo had have run trying to keep that COVID safe. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, it no. Was, it, it, it's probably no. better that we're doing this. So thank you yeah. again goes to Danielle. Absolutely. Big, 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 yeah, thank ourselves. you, Danielle. You, you have been great. We wouldn't yeah. have been able to not hug each other and I then know. it would have been bad. There would have been I like know. a post bendigo spike in COVID. Uh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it's it's. Look, I'm so glad that you are back and that you are up and running again with Cat and Sparrows. Yeah. And I like, I love your fibers and your, and like your toy or to tools. No. Tools. <laughs> tools. 
<laughs> well, you know, I'm not judging. <laughs> I, just, I, do, I love the selection that you choose, like how you curate your stall and just how, like one of the things I always was blown away was how organised your stall is. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was yeah. talking about earlier with, um, with June and giving her yeah. some tips on yeah. how to, you know, set up for her first live event. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And, um, and someone was talking about how not to have a cluttered stall and I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, don't look at my stall. I have your yeah. stall is always so neat and just beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Because I had fantastic helps and, you know, I have to give a big shout to my friend Will. I haven't seen yep. him for months, months. I don't know. I can't even remember last time I saw her. I saw him probably last year at the... Uh, Danielle's event? No, uh, Black Sheep Show. And, yeah, uh, yeah Cranbourne yeah. Sheep Show. After that, I haven't seen him. Uh, and this happened because he's great in helping me uh, getting things organized. And uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and the, your tip of bringing a friend is great. I, I could never, you know, have done that without, without my helper. Yeah. Yeah. Will is. <laughs> What's really funny about Will is the first time I met Will. Yeah. And yeah. If, if you get to guys get to go to an event with Kathy and Will, it is a, an absolute pleasure. Will spindles like a champion. Like yes. Absolute yes. champion. But the absolute. first time I met Will, I was we were setting up a Bendigo. And so it was on the, the <coughs> setup day. So he was obviously there with a, a someone stall but I hadn't seen him yet. Anyway, he's come up and he's yelled out, Chantel, you know, how are you going? And he's given me this big hug and I'm thinking, I don't know this person. <laughs> but what it was is he'd been watching the Fiber Fit YouTube channel. <laughs> I couldn't put the two together because while I knew his YouTube handle, it didn't have a photo. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, it's not <laughs> fun. <laughs> now yeah. it's amazing that we get along like a house and fire. And I he's know. Like, I know people that if you need help, he's just like there. Oh he's yeah, just, he's he's so dying. genuine, and he has such, such a big heart, and he's great, great help. I can't even, you know, I really can't thank him enough. And uh, uh, it, it's just, um, yeah, he's great. I remember, I, I think the first time I started chatting to him, it was on Ravelry uh, in some group and we were talking about uh, tools or um, some some spinning tools rather. And yeah. uh, and, then, and then he started buying stuff from my Etsy shop and uh, I was saying to, um, uh, Sparrow, Rachel, uh, you know, yeah. oh no, it's, it's, it's Will again. Uh, oh gosh, I, you know, he's fine <laughs> again. It was just, and, and, uh, and the back then, because I felt bad and, and I thought, um, I, I, he bought so much stuff and I thought, oh, um, he doesn't live too far away. I'll, I'll deliver it. And then I've got this great big sack of fluff and, <laughs> and I thought, I'll deliver it. So save him some postage. Yeah, and then yeah. and then the friendship has just grown. Like, isn't that funny? That it yeah, happens? yeah. Danielle says we need a petition to bring Will to our next event. Absolutely. Hashtag bring back Will. I'm yes. like, we should be getting that on the Instagram. He will see that yes. and laugh. Absolutely, laugh. Will. If you are watching, come on, <laughs> <laughs> say hello, hello, Will. <laughs> yes. Um, Miss Jane Squiggle says seeing Kathy and Will is always a oh. highlight of going to a wall show. Yes. Hi, Jane. I miss you too. I miss our hugs. <laughs> yes. So you. Like Cat and Sparrow's stall is doing really well at this event and you are having a great, great time. Do you have anything yeah. sort of like I know it's a bit hard with supply chains and stuff, but yeah. do you have anything new that will be coming out like that you want people to come back <laughs> for and checking for later? 
Uh, yes, but uh, I don't know how much later. Um, but um, I, I mean, all throughout this event, I listened to speakers and uh, and also last year when I was doing events with Rachel in the UK, and mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, more and more people um, uh, talking about uh, sustainability, buying local, support local, um, yeah. and, and reduce our carbon footprint and etc. And that got me thinking and um, I've been doing lots of thinking so um, and my next step will be gradually, you know, shifting my focus onto more um, Australian fibers. Mm -hmm. And I have some, I have some ideas. I've been talking with Will and uh, um, you know a big project, and I don't know how yeah. to do it. And uh, and uh, and I want it's to talk big, to Daniel. It's a big job. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk to Danielle about it, and uh, uh, yeah, this this is some ideas I want to do and bring Australian fibers together, and because what I love about the UK is that there are so many uh, mini mills, and uh, and, and yeah. there are uh, people are able to get hold of uh, locally produced fiber with um, much more um, variety. Uh, than yeah. what we have here, um, yeah. I think I love I love Australian wool, um, but most of the time you see um, it's a single uh, single blend, uh, as yeah. in either just a Corridale or just yeah. Merino and uh, uh, Gotland. I love uh, I love Cheryl's Got uh, Gotland, um, by the way. Mm. And but what uh, what I I guess uh, I love about the UK is the ability to mix fibers. Yeah, and you know, doing more blend. Um, we are seeing more and more. Um, yeah, uh, blend. they are happening. Uh, it is slow. It is. It is slow, and uh, yeah. I know the the, uh, the difficulties. And I understand, uh, you know, from talking with Trish um, as well, is uh, the difficulty uh, and the limitations we have here. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, but uh, that's something I would like to do. Uh, to to. Because, um, like you, you know, you said you, we still import because we like more variety. And I, that's right. I we just can't well. get it here. Yeah. That's the problem. It's I, I, not that yeah, we don't I, like what's available. We want exactly. more stuff too. Yeah. So, and, yeah. Uh, and and I love importing from the UK to to have different blend. And uh, for example. Uh, BFL is my all-time favorite to spin. Yeah, I just too. love the I handle. Love yeah, and I love the handle and and the spin so beautifully. And it's hard wearing. It's everything. I just love it. But yeah. we don't have it's it here. That's right. It's not. It's not grown in Australia at all. Don't no. panic. That's my camera being naughty. I'm bringing yeah. it back. Yeah, don't worry, that's okay. Camera. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's I, I can't give any um, uh, definite uh, time yeah, frame or scale. You but get done. Yeah, that's yeah. something that's something I, I, I want to work on. And uh, that's yeah. But uh, immediately, I think I, I need to shift the, the, uh, my lots of, you know, my stock and that uh, I still have some undyed, but it's going to be coming slowly after after this show. And uh, um, and also I have plans to make uh, bats. And oh yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I didn't, I just didn't have time to make bats for this show. Um, really? But... Why? Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> because I needed my bat I kit to with earlier. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think. Uh, look for me. I think I underestimated. Yes. Like I didn't, ha not to diminish the big wool show in any possible way, yeah. but I didn't put a virtual event on the same level as Bendigo and absolutely. that was a mistake. That was, that was my mistake, mistake too. Yes. And yes. Um, it has been just a phenomenal event for so many people and everybody is just like everyone who's in the chat here now watching and watching the replays of the videos that we've already done and watching um, and just getting in and getting involved in conversations. And I just, I I think it's just as good. I think, you know, and I shouldn't have done that. And, the, and my stock levels are proof that I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I absolutely. Think that's the case for everybody. We, I think everybody kind of underestimated. Yes. 
Yes, definitely. Uh, I'm. I. I just as as we were streaming, I could see orders coming in. Uh, so I think. I. I yeah. yeah I, and yesterday, last night, I was uh, picking orders, and um, it's it's my table behind me here that um, you know, yeah. I'll just give you. I don't know. It's this this that table I set up for my shop sample oh, shop there I that, photo of that yeah online. i know I like, oh, yeah. you set up an actual little store i did i did in my in my in my living room uh, my living room is uh it's, it's chock full of one is my uh little stool the other side is a fiber drying and it just i'm not showing you the other side <laughs> and my shelves it. <laughs> and, uh, I, and I show my shelves with all the fibers and tubs and et cetera, et cetera, all of that. And so this trestle table underneath, I have two tubs full of orders I picked last night. And, oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> oh. Yeah. So I, um, it's been one of those amazing events. Oh, hang on. Someone's got a comment here about, here we go. My aunt and uncle have BFL, but I, <laughs> usually they send it all off to be commercially processed. This year, the wool prices have dropped, so they're holding on to them and they're going to send me one. So, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, they say that Cahoon's they... King's family are not in Australia and they're going to be getting BFL. BFL, oh, wow. You are lucky. You are lucky, so lucky. lucky. So lucky. Oh, I tell you, BFL is so good. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's just one of those fibres, like, and like it sounds terrible, like oh, BFL is fantastic. By loving BFL doesn't mean I don't love Corriedale and I don't love Merino. It just means absolutely. I have a lot of fiber love to give. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I'm, I'm not, I'm not. I, I love all fiber, all natural fibers. Yeah. I love, I me love too. Wendy's Castle Dale. Yes. Uh, oh I'm yeah, alpaca alpaca as well. Oh, and, no. and I'm sure oh, I could no. probably yeah. love it if it loved me, but it doesn't. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. But all the um, others. Yeah. Like I love all the others so much. Yeah. And yeah. And that's something like in your blends of your bats and your, um, your braids. You always have such interesting and beautiful blends like yeah. i've still got because i'm hoarding it like a like you oh, no, this is <laughs> not going to be that i'm still going to keep it um i've got a beautiful rose blend that you put together one year oh yes and yes yes I'm, like i've still got that it's like wrapped up and it's like <laughs> i know i know yes i love I, I really love that's that's something uh, Rachel and I uh, both have you know we both love that we both love exploring different fibers and then we enjoy making new blends and putting them together to create something truly unique and yeah. uh, and and because everybody spins differently as well and when you spin and you just you make yarn some someone with the same blend someone can make a really soft squishy yarn and others can make a, a, a bit drippy and it depends yeah. on the uh, spinning style I, that's something i really really love and i love the ability to you know when i buy a, a import from the uk i love the ability to be able to put all the different blends together and yeah but uh, yeah my dream would be to have something like that in australia and, yes and so we can do it yeah. here that that would be my dream come true i think that's going to end up being something that happens Yes, like if you had asked me five years ago, I would have been a bit more like, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't reckon. But mm. I'm beginning to think that uh, people's minds are being a bit more opened and yes. um, and also industry has changed. Yeah, And so um, it is possible now, whereas yeah. five years, ten years ago, it felt impossible. Absolutely. Whereas now um, it definitely yeah. feels possible with the changes in technology and the changes in processing has meant yep. that companies can keep to the EPA regulations for things. Yep. And I just, yeah, I think it's all all good now. Bring it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Oh. Kathy, it's been amazing talking to you today and I'm so glad that you did jump in and that you, you know, decided to come and have a talk and you weren't too scared to come and play with us. <laughs> I know that everybody in the chat is really happy to see you back as well. Oh, thank you. Thank and you, everyone. I can't thank you so much. wait until we can see each other again, like for reals. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. And then thank you, everyone in the audience and in the chat. And thank you so much for your support. Really, really appreciate it. 
Thanks yeah. for coming and joining yeah. into the oh, show this year. Oh, yes. yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've just been reminded of my website. Uh, well, I, I finally bit the bullet and I got my own website because I've been selling off Etsy for years and years and years. Oh, and my God. I know. <laughs> thank you. Um, if you bought from me this weekend, you already seen my website. Otherwise, it's cat and the sparrow, uh, cat and the sparrow .au. So, um, oh, fantastic! Yeah, uh, it's go. still work. Yeah, it's still work in progress. I started uh, making the website on first of July, so yeah. it's a pretty it's new. A it's pretty. Yeah. It's a bit of effort to build your own. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's pretty new. I'm still tweaking things and making changes. But uh, the, you know, the skeleton website is there. And, uh, you know, yeah. you're able to buy things from the shop. So that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's awesome. And it'll only get bigger and better as time goes on. And you get yeah. more comfortable with playing with it and tweaking things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's so exciting. I'm so glad you've got your own site now. Yes. Yay. <laughs> so, all right. Well, we will see you another day. And um, I hope that today goes just as well as yesterday and that the weekend is just full of surprises for you. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone. And uh, keep safe. I hope to see you all in person soon. We, we, that's, our, that's our goal. We, we yeah. do these events to protect ourselves so that we yeah. can all get back together sooner rather than later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. <laughs> See you later, Kathy. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Wow. We had an amazing lineup of people today here in the live stream chat that we've had. Um, one thing I wanted to do is I try not to plug myself too ridiculously, um, but I've decided that I'm going to plug my YouTube channel. So that's YouTube, Fiberific at YouTube. So um, my logo is my little yarn ninja. So it's just um, www.youtube.com slash Fiberific. Now, the reason I'm plugging this is because I've decided that when my channel hits 5,000 subscribers, we're going to have a die along. So if you've watched anything on my channel, you know that on occasion we have these live die sessions where I actually bring all this equipment out to my die shed, put it up over the top of the pots and talk to you while I'm dying yarn and I actually die to photos that people send me. Um, so I, um, sorry, I just put that in there. I really, um, really want to do this thing a little bit differently so that everybody can join in. So when we hit the 5,000 subscribers, on my website, I'm going to make little packs of like undyed yarn with a little hook on it ready for dyeing, the same as what I use here, and a little shopping list of things that you can pick up locally like because we're going to dye food colouring so that you can dye using all your normal pots and pans and not have to worry about it. And we can dye together during this live dye session that we will have as our celebration. So we're, we're so close to 5,000. We're not quite there yet, but we are like, I can smell it. Um, so um, Danielle said here, I watched your continental knitting for crochets last night and it was awesome. Thank you, Danielle. Um, Danielle and I were talking about crocheting versus knitting yesterday. So that came up in topic. Um, we've got Miss Squiggle says, thank you, Chantelle and Danielle, for setting up this live chat. It's been fabulous. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and Vicky says, love your channel. Fantastic job pulling presenters together. Um, it has been Danielle, she can't see her, I can see her, um, is working in the background constantly getting things just organised and rolling. And I just kind of sit here and click buttons and... Danielle has done all the work to pull the Big Wall Show together to organise the whole website. She's just an absolute champion who's just done this to really support us and our community of yarn craft addicts. Um, and I want to say a huge thank you to Danielle as well for making this all possible. So we are at the end of day two's live stream session. So did Danielle, do you want to jump in to have a chat? Yeah, she's nodding her head. Um, so Lisa Chapman said, that sounds it's exciting. I think so too, Lisa. Um, here we go. Here's Danielle. Hi, Danielle. Hello, everyone. And thank you so much um, for joining today. 
Uh, I just want to say the fun's not over yet. So we're, we're um, the live stream will end, and I just noticed how like the lighting on my face is amazing again. That's right, you look yeah. like forty glamour. <laughs> I'm a <goose>. <laughs> so <cool. laughs> um, But I just want to say that um, knit one felt too. So Joe um, is a felter. She's actually doing a live felt demo at. 3 p.m. on Facebook. Oh, fantastic. So you've got time to run and grab a cuppa and then go back. Exactly. So um, if you want to check that out, um, just head to Knit One Felt Two's Facebook page and she'll be doing a live there. So it's very exciting. Um, and we also have a couple of competitions running this weekend. So um, if you love free stuff and you love free, oh, no, free stuff. Is horrible. <laughs> um so i'll just i'll just let you know about that so um you can win a huge cocoa knits pack um courtesy of skein sisters um it's valued at over 130 bucks all you have to do is jump onto instagram um and put a post up and let us know what you like the most about the big wool show um and use a hashtag which is hashtag bws cocoa knits um so make sure you, you enter that competition we've also got now a little birdie told me we've got another competition um that's launching at three o'clock today on instagram as well and this one is for spinners and felters so we spoke to renelle earlier today from cloverleaf yeah. corridor club um and she's been so generous and she's actually donated three fleeces um to the big wool show to give away um, oh my gosh! Yep, yeah, huge, huge. So, um, and they're beautiful. So we've got a white one, a grey one, and a tan one as well. Um, so jump onto Instagram, um, or actually follow us on Instagram. You'll see a post later up today uh, with the details for that. Um, and I also just want to say, if you have enjoyed the live video, uh, live stream, and the big wool show today, we're also raising money for the Indigenous Literacy Fund. So if you um, would like to make a donation, jump on um, to our homepage at, at thebigwoolshow.com um, and you'll see a button to donate there. Um, oh, yeah. So probably just want to say a huge thank you, Chantel. Again, day two, amazing job. Thank you. You've got a voice. You made it. I've still got a voice for now. <laughs> um, and it's time I for I definitely need T2 sponsorship. That's all I can say. T2, <laughs> send me that licorice legs tea. <laughs> I, reckon, I think I do owe you that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so big thank you to our speakers today. Um, if you missed anything or had to step out, the live stream will be available for replay on our website. So you can, or if you just really want to watch it again, uh, you can jump in and see it. Um, yeah, so please enjoy. Thank you so much and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow at 10.